I'm calling the special meeting of the first 2020 to order all council members, staff members, and members of the public are participating by teleconference. This council meeting is being conducted pursuant to provision of, provisions of the Brown Act and a recent executive order issued by the governor to facilitate teleconferencing to reduce the risk of COVID-19 transmission at public meetings. Ordinarily, the Brown Act set, set strict rules for teleconferencing. The governor's executive order has suspended these rules. The executive order does require that we continue to notice meetings in advance. The city has met all of the applicable notice requirements. As noted in the agenda, members of the public may observe this teleconference meeting. Members of the public may offer public comment by email to cityclerk at cupertino.org prior to the close of the public comment period for the agenda item on which they would like to comment. The city clerk will share all such comments with the council at the meeting, subject to the time limits applicable to public comment and make them part of the record. Alternatively, Members of the public may offer public comment orally during the teleconference. Members of the public are requested to send an email to cityclerk at cupertino.org ahead of time if they wish to display any attachments on the screen. Because we are not all in the same room, all votes at this meeting will be taken by roll call. Like all city council meetings, this meeting is being recorded. Now I would like to ask the city clerk to proceed with the roll call. Council member Chow. Here. Council member Sinks. Here. Council member Willie. Here. Vice mayor Paul. Here. Mayor Sharp. Here. Uh, I also wanna point out we did not do the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we won't do it during teleconference meetings. Before we get into ceremonial matters and presentations, I would like to report out on our closed session. Uh, item one, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, government code section 54956.9D, possible initiation of litigation under government code section 54956.9D4. Uh, council gave approval to initiate litigation by joining a coalition of cities and counties. Once the action is formally commenced by the coalition, filings, defendants, and other, participant, other particulars will be disclosed to any person upon request as provided in government code section 54957.1. Item two, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to paragraph three of subdivision D of section 54956.9, one claim, clean cut landscape, incorporated CCLI. Council gave direction to the city attorney's office. No reportable action was taken. Okay, now we are on to ceremonial matters and presentations. We have one item, it's a staff presentation on Rosenberg's rules of order. We're ready for the presentation. Thank you, Mayor. This is Heather Minner, your city attorney. I'm going to share my screen now with the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so this presentation will provide a brief overview of Rosenberg's rules of order, which the council recently adopted to govern city council and commission meetings. I'll discuss the procedures consider for considering an agenda item, basic motions and the order of the vote on them, special motions to control debate in the meeting and a few points on courtesy and decorum. The pre presentation is about 15 minutes long. Mayor, would you like to provide time for questions at the end or I can address questions as they may come up throughout the presentation? Uh, if possible, let's hold them to the end, but if somebody wants to interrupt that, that's okay. Very well. So why do we have parliamentary rules of procedure in place? mainly so that people know how to participate in a public meetings and to make meetings more fair and democratic. And sometimes procedural rules determine the substantive outcome. 
I'll start with a trivia question. Does anyone know what the sixth ordinance ever adopted by the city of Cupertino was? Well, I'll tell you, it was an ordinance passed in 1955 adopting Robert's Rules of Order as the parliamentary rules of procedure for city council meetings. And that was specifically the 1951 edition. Now, Robert's Rules are useful if you're running a formal parliament, but they are pretty cumbersome for a five member city council meeting. Not to mention the fact that I haven't found a 1951 edition yet. So in February of this year, council enacted a muni code amendment and a resolution naming Rosenberg's rules of order rather than Robert's rules as the governing rules of parliamentary procedure. Rosenberg's rules of order provide a simplified version of Robert's rules and were designed with city council and county board meetings in mind. For instance, Rosenberg's is just eight pages long, whereas Robert's is over 800 pages. So Rosenberg's rules are practical, logical, simple, easy to learn and user friendly. And they do cover, they don't cover everything, but they cover most situations that you'll see. To start a meeting under Rosenberg's rules, you need a quorum of the members. Usually um, this is one more than half the body. For the city council, this is three members and the quorum must remain to continue actions during the meeting. Rosenberg's rules include a basic format for discussion of an agenda item, which is consistent with the city's current practice. First, the chair clearly announces the agenda item number and subject and any special procedures for considering the item. For instance, if there's um, a hearing for a land use development project, the chair then invites appropriate persons to report on the item, including any recommendations they may have Usually this is a staff report, but it could also be a report by the chair or another member. The chair then asks members of the body if they have any technical questions or clarifications of staff. And the chair then invites public comments. And afterwards, the chair invites a motion to begin discussion and determine if someone seconds the motion. Now a second is not required to begin discussion, but it helps determine if more than one member is interested in an item. In Cupertino, there's a practice of beginning debate on, on an item without a motion, but Rosenberg's includes a motion first. A next step is to make sure everyone understands the motion by having the chair, secretary, or the maker repeat it. The chair then invites discussion of the motion, and after the discussion, the chair calls a vote and announces the results of the vote. In Cupertino, the practice is to have the clerk, the city clerk, announce the results. Now, motions generally require a simple majority to pass. Um, note that even if some members are absent, the Cupertino Municipal Code specifically requires the votes of at least three council members for passage of all ordinance resolutions and orders for payment of money. Now, motions are vehicles for decision making. The chair usually initiates a motion by inviting members of the body to make a motion or suggesting a motion himself or herself. These are the standard motions for considering action on an item. The basic motion puts forward a decision for consideration. A motion to mend takes the basic motion and seeks to change it in some way. And a substitute motion is made if a member wants to completely do away with the basic motion and put a new motion before the body. Um, substitute motions and motions to amend are often confused, but they are different. A substitute motion seeks to throw out the basic motion and substitute a new and different motion for it. A motion to amend seeks to retain the basic motion, but modify it in some way. There's also a convenience procedure called a friendly amendment. When a council member seeks to slightly change the pending motion to win support or make it more desirable. The member suggesting the friendly amendment, the member suggests the friendly amendment, and if the maker and the person who seconded the motion accepts the friendly amendment, that now becomes the motion on the floor. There's no need to vote on friendly amendments. But if either the person who made the motion or seconded it rejects the friendly amendment, then the other member can formally move to amend the motion, and that motion to amend requires a vote. 
Now there can be up to three motions on the floor at the same time. More than three motions at a time can create confusion. The chair can reject a fourth motion until the chair has dealt with the three that are on the floor and has resolved them. When there are two or three motions on the floor at the same time, the vote should proceed first on the last motion that is made. Let's go to an example. So here the first motion is the basic motion, a motion to have five, a five member committee to plan an annual fundraiser. The second motion could be a motion to amend, to have a 10 member committee. And the third motion would be a substitute motion. For instance, a motion not to have an annual fundraiser at all. The voting order would proceed from the last to the first. So first vote on the substitute motion. If it passes, then the basic motion and the amendment are moot since this was a substitute motion. If the substitute failed, the second vote would be on the amendment and debate on that um, motion would be just on whether to amend the original motion. And then the third vote would be on the original motion, either amended or not, depending on the last vote. Now, Rosenberg's rules includes a section on motions that limit debate and discussion. Generally, all motions are eligible for full discussion and debate and can continue as long as the members of the body wish to discuss them. However, there are exceptions to the general rule of open debate. The exception applies when there's a desire of the body to move on. These listed motions are not debatable. This means when the following motions are made and seconded, the chair must immediately call for a vote without debate. The first is a motion to limit debate. It, it, ex it expresses a desire to end debate and move on to, to a vote. This is the common form is to say, I move the previous question. I move the question, I call the question, those types of motions. It can also be a motion to limit debate to a specific time period. For instance, I move to limit debate on this item to 15 minutes. The, care, the chair can treat this call of the question as a request whether the, rather than a formal motion and ask, is there any further discussion? If no one wishes to have further discussion, then, then the chair can go straight to the motion. But even if one person wishes to discuss the pending motion, the chair should ask for a vote on the motion to call the question. This requires a two thirds vote of the body to end debate. So a council of five members would require four votes to end the debate. The other motions listed here just require a simple majority to pass. A motion to table requires discussion of the agenda item to be halted and for the item to be placed on hold. It can be continued to a specific time to come back, for instance, tabling the item to the end of the meeting, but it doesn't have to. A motion to recess requires the body to immediately take a recess and the chair determines the length of the recess. A motion to fix the time to adjourn requires the body to adjourn the meeting at a specific time. And a motion to adjourn requires the body to immediately adjourn to its next regularly scheduled meeting. Rosenberg's rules also includes a section on courtesy and decorum. Now it's up to the chair and the members of the body to maintain, maintain common courtesy and decorum. It's always best for one person at a time to have the floor and for a speaker to be first recognized by the chair before proceeding to speak. In fact, Cupertino Municipal Code codifies this in a section about discussion procedure. It provides that during discussion, council members have a duty to remain seated and address their remarks to the chair and their fellow council members. Any remarks to the audience shall be addressed by the chair or with the chair's permission by the members of the council. Rosenberg's rules urges council and commission members to focus on policy and not personality. Debate on policy is healthy, but debate should not get personal. The chair has the right to cut off discussion that's too personal loud or crude. And Rosenberg's rules also encourage concise debate. The chair may limit the time allotted to speakers, including members of the body in the interest of time. Now interruptions while another member is speaking are generally not allowed, but there are some exceptions. For instance, interruptions by saying point of privilege relate to comfort of the meeting. For instance, it's too hot, it's too loud. And the chair would then ask, state your point. There's also point of order. 
And that would be anything would be considered appropriate that would not be considered appropriate conduct of a meeting, like the chair did not allow debate of the motion. For appeals, the chair of, is the, of the body is charged with running the meeting and applying the rules of conduct. But if a chair makes a ruling that a member of the body disagrees with, that member may appeal the ruling of the chair. If the motion is seconded and after debate, if it passes by a simple majority vote, then the ruling of the chair on the procedure, if procedural issue is reversed. Call for the orders of the day is when a member believes that the body has drifted from the agreed upon agenda. No vote is required. The chair simply reminds the body to stay on the agenda topic. And there are interruptions can also be made to withdraw a motion. Now that concludes my presentation. If anyone would like more detailed overview of Rosenberg's rules and practice with hypotheticals, Judge Rosenberg himself has a 50 minute presentation which is posted on the California League of Cities webpage. And you can find it by Googling Rosenberg's rules, League of Cities. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, any council members? have any questions or comments on this? I have a question. I have a question. Hi, oh, great, thanks. Um, so I have a question. Uh, my first question is about limiting debate. And um, I, I wanna clarify if I, if I heard this correctly or if it was covered. So a motion to limit debate or call the question uh, currently requires a two thirds vote, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, what would we need to do uh, since we have five people and two thirds is uh, a super majority? What would we need to do in order to turn that into 60% of the members present? Uh, you need that, four, four members to limit debate. I, I understand. Right. But, but, we but wanted, to modify if, Rosenberg's rules of order. That's if we wanted to modify our procedure such that three out of five or 60% are required. How would that be done? Would that need to be done through resolution or would that require an ordinance change? It, um, you could do it by modifying the resolution that established Rosenberg's rules of order. There is actually also a procedure in Rosenberg's itself to uh, suspend the rules of order, which I believe requires a two thirds vote itself. Um, and so you could do it on the fly per the, during the meeting that way. Otherwise you could um, amend, the council adopted a resolution that establishes Rosenberg's rules of order and council could amend that resolution to clarify the limiting debate um, voting, voting thresholds. Okay, and then a resolution would require a majority, correct? In order to achieve yes. that? Okay. Um, I thought it was a great presentation. Um, do you, do you have um, plans to make this uh, an annual presentation? The council requested I could. Okay. Uh, how many substitute or amended motions can be on the dais at any given point in time? The chair can allow um, three, and then after that would work through the motions. Okay, is there any requirement that a substitute motion um, be made after an amended, an, an amendment motion? No, it could be made beforehand. Okay, so we'll get a three, so it could be a motion and two substitute motions or a motion and amendment and a substitute motion as well as in, in two amendments, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, all right, thanks very much. You're welcome. Okay, uh, anybody else wanna ask anything? I don't, oh, um, Kirsten, do any members of the public wish to comment on this agenda item? Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, hello, hi. I'm okay, go. Okay, so um, we can have at most three motions at ta on the table at a time, um, but then would that count the motion to limit debate or table or recess? If there is already um, a motion, an amendment, a substitute motion that's already, already three. Can someone then put forth another motion, which will be the fourth one, to limit debate? That would be up to the chair. 
So that will be a fourth one. So this motion to limit detail will be counted as one, right? Yes. Okay. And that is a motion that must be acted on immediately. So you wouldn't, so you would take that motion as it's made. So it's up to the chair. Do you mean after the three motions, whether we can go beyond fourth motion, it's up to the chair to decide or it's yes. not? So it's not for the council to vote on whether to go beyond three. It's the chair that will decide. Yes. Okay. But be, if but if there were only two motions on the table and then a motion to debate will be the third one, then that would not need the, the mayor to decide. Yes, you would then decide that a motion immediately. Okay. Um, Okay, so I guess we need to practice this. <laughs> and so this, um, so council members should address the chair, not the public. I think that's something we usually don't follow. It's well, all, we are all facing the public and then we are supposed to be talking to the mayor who is next to us, we may or may not see. It's customary to say um, mayor through the chair and then respond and the, and the chair sort of nods and then you would respond to the public. So it doesn't mean that you can't talk to the public, but you would usually request the chair's uh, authorization to do so. Um, wait, I think usually when, especially when we are voting on something, we want to specify our position we would be talking to, I guess the fellow council members and the public, the reason I support this or not support this, support this is this. Right. So are we supposed to be addressing the mayor only when we are stating this? The idea is that you're addressing your fellow council members and the mayor, and of course you're doing so in a public forum so that you are also- so Not just the mayor, it's okay to address the fellow council members also. Yes, yes it okay. is. And then sometimes we also ask staff to answer questions, especially when during a staff uh, presentation, we ask clarifying questions. Should we address the question to the presenter or just to the mayor? Typically, the mayor would recognize the council member. And so you'd say, you know, I, or he would invite questions by council members, in which case you could direct, you could ask staff questions directly. Yeah, so the question would still be addressed to the presenter, right? It's just, we are recognized by the mayor, which That's is correct. always the case, right? That's correct. So I don't see a case when we actually only address the mayor, except when make maybe making a motion. Right. Right. Usually we will be addressing the fellow council members or the presenter. So the only time we will be addressing only the mayor is when we are making a motion. We you want to clarify that because I was confused. Uh, it feels odd to be addressing only the mayor all the time. <laughs> the, the municipal code says council members have a duty to address their remarks to the chair and their fellow council members. The so that's a municipal code, that's not the Rosenberg's rule? Um, the Rosenberg's rule um, says it's, um, every speaker should be recognized by the chair before proceeding to speak. But the Rosenberg's rule doesn't have this additional thing that's in our municipal code that council members should address the chair and fellow council members. It, it overlaps, I think. And another thing to keep in mind is Rosenberg rules are not regulations, they're, they're rules to guide your procedures. And it's often common for council to have um, that um, that you know doesn't strictly follow every single step. Um, okay. 
so our suicide. so our adopted ordinance which was adopted in 2018 i guess um was uh the rosenberg's rule but not only that there were some additional things on top of rosenberg's rule so are for other what other things we have modified on top of rosenberg you have your municipal code mm, right. that's not in today's actually that's not included in the attachment of today's agenda no so right. this was just a presentation provide, can the staff provide a, a summary of what our municipal code have beyond rosenberg's rule so that i'm clear which part is just Rosenberg, which part is on top of that, which I think it was staff recommendation at the time. The council in 2018 didn't really go into detail about this. So I want to clear, clearly understand which part is Cupertino mm -hmm. only rules and uh, why we are adding those. Yes, I can provide that to you. That would be great. Mm. Okay. Okay, is there anyone else oh. that wishes to speak? Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. us. Um, possibly we have um, one of the callers waiting on hold to speak on this item. So if anyone is um, calling by phone, I'd like to request that you press star nine to raise your hand right now and we can allow you to speak. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone. So, um, sorry, you may proceed. Okay, uh, so that ends our ceremonial matter and presentation. Uh, Madam City Clerk, are there any postponements? No postponements, Mr. Mayor. Okay, then we are on to oral communications. Uh, have we received any requests for oral communications? Yes, we Connie Cunningham would like is waiting to speak and she also has a presentation that I will share with my screen. Okay. Um, I think we're ready for her. So you get three minutes. Welcome Connie. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Just a second. Uh, <laughs> Kirsten, I'm not, or Madam Clerk, I'm not sure that's the right presentation or the right. Uh, Connie? I think it is. But yeah. Yep. Okay. Can you take it down for a minute? I wanted to speak and then maybe at the end, if that's appropriate, you can uh, put it back up. But right now that that wouldn't work for me. Okay. I'm gonna... I, I'd like to just go ahead now. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, go ahead. I'll start oh, okay. the timer. As Thank you. Good evening, talking. Mayor. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council Members, um, City Manager and Staff. I'm Connie Cunningham uh, from the Housing Commission, but speaking as myself only, I want to thank all of you for your service to our community. While we are under a shelter in place order to help flatten the curve of this COVID-19 pandemic. This morning we heard that the order has been extended to May 3rd. During this time, many actions are happening at the federal, state, county, and municipal levels to stop the surge of COVID cases and to limit the financial impacts on people. In spite of all that is being done, nonprofits still need donations from people like you and me uh, to fill the gaps that happen because each person's case is unique. And I am speaking to all the people that are here, not just the um, mayor and vice mayor and so forth. I use my time today to ask you and all who are watching online to give generously to those who are serving our neighbors and friends who are in fear of losing their income or their homes or both. And also for those who serve homeless neighbors, many of whom have nowhere to shelter in place. West Valley Community Services is located in Cupertino and provides those services to our Cupertino friends and neighbors. I am a regular donor to West Valley Community Services and I know their work. Can you make a commitment tonight 
to click on this link in your browser, which I will tell you, and give generously. It's uh, HTTPS colon backslash backslash www.wvcommunityservices.org backslash donate dash now dash COVID-19. No dash in COVID-19. So I will repeat that because I know it's kind of long. Um, but if you could make a commitment tonight, because this is out from April 3rd to May 3rd, so two rental periods will go by. Make a commitment tonight, https colon backslash backslash www.wvcommunityservices.org backslash donate dash now dash COVID-19, no dash in that COVID-19. And I wanna thank you so much. Stay healthy, everyone. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Connie. Uh, Madam City Clerk, was there anyone else for oral communications? Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have Jiang He, who's waiting online to speak. Okay, uh, welcome. Uh, we're ready. Yes, hi, Mayor and uh, Council members. Um, <clears throat> I think the, I mean, the previous speaker already mentioned that we are uh, about COVID-19 and I think this is a really unprecedented uh, emergency situation that we are living in. Um, I'm just wondering what the city, this is a kind of more of a question than, um, and just kind of sharing ideas rather than a specific uh, idea. I mean, the request that I have to the city councils but I'm just wondering what kind of the actions that the city is uh, taking to um, ensure the public health. Um, I mean, they especially uh, Cupertino, the, the citizens living in the Cupertino for the, their uh, safety, I mean, their uh, public health and the safety. I mean, right now everyone is staying at home, but if, I think this will have tremendous consequences, economic and the social consequences and aftermath. And I think there there could be um, more the public uh, safety issues coming up. And I wonder how the city is preparing for, and also how is the city preparing for its own um, matter? Like what kind of resources it is pre preserving to be prepared to to reach out when the need comes from, I mean, from everywhere. So I'm just wondering uh, what we can do and what the city has to be done. I mean, I think it is not a normal time. We cannot just stand sitting in a, in a sense of normalcy, um, but we have to be more in the emergency mode to preserve everything and focus on solving this problem. So I'm kind of here to, um, get some comments from the, the councils if, if the time allows. Okay, so we, we don't comment on oral communications because it's not an agenda item, but later on in the meeting during council and staff comments, the uh, city manager and other staff members can comment on what the city's actions are. And I know that there, there was a mailer, I got it today. I don't know how many other people got, got it in the mail today, but I'm sure our city manager will have uh, a copious amount of comments when the time comes in the meeting for that. Is that true, Deb? Can we have the city manager just respond right now? Because we don't want people to wait until the very end for the important message from city manager. Um, well, we'd have to have a motion to modify the agenda to to allow that. I'm, I'm perfectly willing to do I'll that. I'll make the motion because I think it's best served you know, having the city manager's comments with the request. Okay, so um, the motion should be to move council and staff comments, um, but not future agenda items. Um, might, might I suggest that we finish sure. hearing from the public first? Sure, um, yeah, but look, okay. Uh, Madam City Clerk, were there any other people for oral communications? 
So it looks like we have one additional person. I want to remind anyone who's waiting to speak under this item, please press star nine if you're calling in from the phone. And while we're waiting for that, I do, Mr. Mayor, have uh, three emails to read from the public. Okay, but that was a good point. Thank you, Rod. I, I, uh, I should have thought of that. We'll do the motion after uh, we finish oral communications. Okay, so who's next for oral? So this is from Joseph Fruin, Mayor No, Sharp. no, no, I mean, was there someone else waiting to speak? Well, I haven't seen that person raise their hand yet, so I just wanted to remind anyone waiting to press. Yeah, remind them again, it's star what? Star nine, if you're okay. waiting on the phone only. Okay, yeah, I, I'm looking, I don't see it. Okay, all right, well, okay, you can uh, proceed to read the uh, email communication. Okay. This is from Joseph for Mayor Sharp and members of the City Council. As the City continues its efforts towards providing relief for renters through West Valley Community Services, I again ask that you mobilize the full capacity of the City through its public relations channels, including its retained PR consultant, to publicize where and how residents may connect with resources. Many residents are unaware of the programs offered through WVCS, other charitable organizations, and or government agencies. That lack of knowledge may swiftly compound the significant human misery already occurring in our city and in neighboring communities. The city's coronavirus page is a good start. That said, nextdoor.com postings daily indicate that many residents may remain unaware of key legislation benefiting them, such as the county's COVID-19 eviction moratorium. The city of San Jose has elected to distribute postcards to help inform the public. As you review the monies available in the budget for the city work plan, please consider where you might fund not only for renters assistance, but also the funds to help inform the public where they can find the help they need. Many thanks. Please stay safe. J.R. Frew and Cupertino resident. My next email is from VG. Dear council members, recently I looked at the budget report on our city's website and learned the city's main sources of revenue are sales tax of 30%, occupancy tax of 11%, and property tax of 28% aggregating approximately 69%. I also noticed that for FY 2020, the expected revenues are 142 million and expenditures are higher at 150 million. And the city is transferring 8 million from reserves to balance the budget. We're going through an unprecedented, unprecedented healthcare situation in our county and businesses in Cupertino are closed for an unknown period. And there is economic uncertainty at national level that could lead to a recession in the coming month. So I reached out to Ms. Alfaro about how the city of Cupertino's financial situation will be affected this year and next. We still have a quarter left in this fiscal year and revenues will likely decrease in sales tax, occupancy tax and property tax for this and the following fiscal year. Based on the reply I received, the city has 19 million in economic uncertainty reserves to dip into if the revenues fall short. I was referred to read the budget balancing strategies in budget report and some of the cost saving measures include furloughs, staff reduction and reduction in contingencies, among others. When revenues fall short, there might be difficult decisions for the city council to take in the future. So I request the council to think long and hard if you have to spend or allocate another additional dollar for non-essential work at this time. The city has to be fiscally responsible and conservative at this uncertain time. It would be great if the city council brings forward an interim report on the financial impact to the city due to COVID-19 for the current fiscal year and for next council discussion and public awareness. Thank you to the city manager and staff for regularly updating the public every single day on the status of COVID-19. Stay safe. Thanks, VG Cupertino resident. And I have one final from JJ. Dear respected clerk, please forward to the council during the oral discussion. Received the letter from the law firm regarding the current situation pertaining to the family home. The attorneys got what was demanded even under our objection. In addition, they evaded our court service request for a neutral third party resulting in the city's use of the same biased employees for the inspection. We were refused the right to talk to the Cupertino city manager Apart from the attorney's unprofessional conduct and the excessive legal fees, they have caused additional financial burdens resulting from unnecessary paper filings, disregarding our request for information. They are totally using tax dollars not to help residents when a city service is involved. For many years, we received no local services since we were not part of the city's service list. City slow adapt former county area. 
being subject being subjected to the laws of Santa Clara County, but to abide city code to pay fee to torn down the buildup, causing more burdens. Local commercial businesses are not subject oh, to tactics. Oh, oh, All of these costs would be abated and the complete legal interrogatory should be thrown out of the court as we were shot down any requests without any legit reason, lacking any input from Cupertino city residents, H family, elder and young. And that is all I have for you, Mr. Mayor. Thank okay, you. and the person that was waiting to speak, I guess, has not raised their hand. Is that true? The hand is still not raised. So the name is okay. Roger Jensen. It was what? Oh, I see Roger Jensen there, but... Um, but I don't see a raised hand, so perhaps no. it's for another item. I see, okay. Um, very good. Yeah, I do see him there as well. Okay, uh... Very good. So now we are done with oral. Can we have a motion to modify the agenda so the city manager can provide, I think, just staff comments for now? Um, I, I make the motion to uh, provide for those staff comments and save the others for later. Okay. That, that's, that should be sufficient. Um, sure. I'll second that. All in favor? Roll call. I, um, the will just Kirsten, aye. can you do a roll call? Unmute yourself. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We need a roll We need a, yeah, roll, we need a call. roll call because, yeah, you have to do a roll We're call. Council member Chow. Aye. Council member Sinks. Aye. Council member Willie. Aye. Vice Mayor Paul. Aye. Mayor Scharf. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, so thank you. That uh, that was a good suggestion. And um, Madam City Manager, would you like to provide the feedback on what the city has been doing in terms of COVID-19 and also mention how we're reaching out to um, outside sources to try to work on a plan for um, assistance Sure. Um, let me focus my my uh, comments in, a, in about three buckets. One is um, what we're doing with city facilities and what we've done there, um, what we're doing with other cities um, and what we might do, be doing on a communication from a communication standpoint. Um, so city facilities, if people have not noticed, are all closed uh, for public use, unfortunately, right now. We have taken an advantage, the advantage of time to do deep cleaning in each one of those facilities so that when we do reopen, they're all uh, free of, um, of any kind of lingering uh, bacteria or whatever. It's all deep cleaned via our uh, janitorial service. And then there's a few of us at City Hall that come into work every day as essential workers to um, carry out whatever uh, actions that we get that are changed from the day-to-day -day orders from the county. Um, that's what we've been doing lately is because things are changing so rapidly. Um, uh, we, we, we take a lot of time during the day to interpret new orders such as the one that came down today and how it might affect current operations. Um, so let me now move to um, what we're doing. I forgot my second bucket already. <laughs> But my first bucket was city facilities. My second one is planning, advanced planning. So um, at the beginning of all this, I declared a local state of emergency. I believe it was on, on March 11 and ratified by the city council on March 17th. Um, uh, while it didn't do a whole lot in terms of um, actual emergency things, emergency things that I have to do, it does open the possibility of additional resources um, and being able to move about a little more freely when reacting to an emergency. Um, we have been meeting as an uh, emergency operations center, virtual, of course. We've been meeting uh, twice a day, every day for the first two and a half weeks, approximately. And then we've been meeting three times a week, um, starting uh, late last week, 
um, because the changes were not as pronounced. Um, some of the things that we are currently doing are coordinating with other cities, ensuring that we are in line with what the county direction is, um, ensuring that we're getting enough information in terms of how we should operate from both state and county, and actually being aware of any resources that may be coming uh, available either from the state, the federal government, state, and how it flows down to county. Um, many people will go, could go to our Cupertino website. We are, we have a COVID-19 webpage um, and we have one both for residents to up, keep everybody updated. Um, I believe along with uh, any kind of resources that might be made available to assist them. Uh, we also have a section for businesses. Um, many of the uh, amounts of money and assistance are coming uh, for small businesses because they're the ones uh, suffering the most right now. So we have our uh, economic development leader uh, manager um, working with small businesses, for example, to fill out the Small Business Administration loan and financial aid paperwork. Um, and she's reaching out to other businesses as well in order to gain assistance. She's also working with the chamber um, and reaching out to Rotary. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're doing a daily update for COVID. Um, and as people who are paying attention to those can see, we had a lot of changing information at the beginning of those and they are starting to become a little more bite-sized, but all of that information is also posted to our website. But when we get new information, we do push it out to Facebook and um, next door. For those um, that are uh, able to get print, we have um, printed and delivered uh, how to deal with COVID. There's a big card stock kind of flyer that has all of our key city phone numbers, um, links to websites, um, narrative that describe what you should be doing to take care of yourself. Um, we also recently published the scene that was COVID specific with more instructions and more hopeful in, helpful information such as phone numbers. And we have been um, also communing, communicating over email uh, where it's appropriate. Um, with regard to support for people that um, are being, have, uh, are housing insecure, um, we have been um, supporting West Valley by talking to other city managers and other cities that the mayors uh, will be uh, involved shortly um, on a strategy, a more long-term strategy on how we support West Valley as our community service nonprofit organization that helps our the residents in the West Valley cities. I believe a meeting of the city managers is currently being scheduled by the lead city this year, Las Gatas, for this week. Um, and then at the same time, we're reaching out to large businesses to, uh, to see if we can compel or talk to them about donating to West Valley directly. Anytime the city does not have to handle the money, it's a better thing. It's just direct to West Valley. And so far, um, Apple has contributed or committed to, um, to West Valley $100,000 for renter's assistance. Um, other than that, we do have a lot of things in motion to help the community. Um, I wanna pay particular attention to our, um, our senior center has been staying in touch with all of its membership in our recent um, daily updates, as well as the scene, as well as our item, items of interest. We have published phone numbers so that seniors can access the senior center, even if they're not members to obtain um, support. Uh, for example, we uh, learned that there were about 15 seniors who were um, food, needing food and connected up with West Valley in offering our staff services to actually pick up food and deliver. Um, so there's a lot of connections going on to try and help the community through this rough time. And uh, I've been answering emails as best that I can throughout, um, but that's what we've been up to. Um, so it's been it's been super busy, um, and in addition, we are 
we will probably, and I can't tell you when we'll do this, but obviously it's going to be relatively soon. We'll be bringing to council what I call a recessionary budget profile. You'll hear me talk about this in one of our items on the work program today, um, but things are changing very quickly. Um, so we are looking at uh, the current budget situation as well as its implications for fiscal year 2021. And if there are any questions or comments, that's a quick summary of all the activity. Could you add via Chateau? Oh, yeah. Uh, just about that. Yeah. Yes. So obviously during this shelter at home uh, order, um, ridership has dropped greatly. We were really progressing well and uh, the ramp up was, it was very popular. So I was very encouraged. So we are down to one or two van vans, depending upon a uh, demand and scheduling. Um, we have uh, uh, gotten those vans so that they only take one rider at a time and at, for um, social distancing requirements. And after each ride, the van is wiped down by the driver with um, alcohol wipes and other sanitation um, equipment. Um, and what that's, those shells are designed to do right now is there are folks in our community who uh, can't drive and need to either get to essential places or essential appointments. And so what I didn't want to do was cut them off um, and leave those people without an alternative. Um, so uh, I was heartened to see that the recent order that I just read through that uh, got published this afternoon um, actually talks about enabling uh, shuttle services so that people can get to essential appointments in central places like grocery stores and doctor's appointments um, who don't drive or who otherwise don't have a care provider that can drive them from, uh, any from their home to any location they need to. So Deb, uh, regarding VIA, if you have two members of the same household, what is the logic that they're not allowed to ride in the same van? Uh, you know, I have to follow up on that because they should be able to if they're from the same household. Say a, say somebody is, um, say a couple is going to a doctor's appointment. Um, they should be able to go together. Right. Yeah, I would be interested if we could modify yeah. the uh, order just to fix that. Absolutely. Okay. Does anyone else have a raised hand on Deb's report? I don't see anybody. Um, one now, Connie. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess uh, it is an agenda item, so people can uh, speak orally. Okay. Uh, yeah, welcome, Connie. Wanted to thank uh, Deb and the entire staff for everything that they are doing. <clears throat> thank you. Okay, that was good. Thanks, Connie. <laughs> uh, anybody else, uh, Kirsten? That's it, Mr. Mayor. Great. Um, so we are on to, uh, let's see, where are we here? Reports on committee assignments. Does anyone have any, re has anyone been to any committee meetings on anything? The staff report is I've been to all COVID committee assignments <laughs> <laughs> since the beginning. <laughs> Right, uh, and I've attended many uh, of the county's COVID calls, and tomorrow one with uh, one with the White House and Dr. Fossey, which should be interesting. Um, although that's not a committee, uh, I'm t I guess I am considering I'm on the uh, emergency operations. Uh, okay, I'll uh, I'll report out on my meeting. Sure, go. Uh, on March 9th, the uh, County Housing and Community Development Committee uh, has uh, invited Cupertino to sit in on that um, on that series of meetings. I believe they take place on a quarterly basis. Uh, and uh, essentially what it is is that uh, they are a uh, collective of the county entities that uh, process CDBG funds, primarily for uh, cities that have less than 50,000 in population. Uh, there is a function for us being there in Cupertino as part of the county's committee. Uh, it simply wasn't uh, effectuated at this last meeting, um, but we're on the committee now, so I guess that's good participation. 
Um, and then on March 12th, the VTA PAC was canceled. Uh, however, on March 26th, the uh, Silicon Valley Regional Interoperability Authority uh, did hold a teleconference and conduct their regular business there. That's it. Thanks. Okay, anyone else? It's hard for me to see all the raised hands because um, I can't see all the participants at once. Um, but seeing no one speaking, we can move on to consent calendar. Um, Madam City Clerk, did anyone wish to pull anything? I would like to pull number nine and uh, let's see, I guess it's, I guess it's just number nine. I have not received any emails and I do not see any commenters. Okay, did any other council members wish to pull any items? Uh, so, I don't, but I will move items five through 11. I, I would like to pull the item for February, 20, the minutes for February 24th meeting. Okay, I will move items number six, seven, eight, 10 and 11 on the consent calendar. Second. Okay, roll call vote, please. Council Member Chow? Aye. Council Member Sinks? Aye. Council Member Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Paul? Aye. Mayor Sharp? Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Okay, um, so Council Member Chow, you pulled item five. Yeah. Uh, welcome. So that was a discussion for the work program, and but the minutes only said the council gave input that's all there was not um description of what input the council gave so i think we the minutes should be action minutes however anything that any direction that the council gave at that time we did um have majority consensus on some of the items that was integrated into the work program. So that should be in the minutes. And even um, items that were proposed by some council members that did not get con majority support, that should still be recorded as actions not taken. Um, so I, I believe Kirsten has revised the minutes, but I haven't seen that yet. So. Actually Council Member Chow, they, they were included in this amended agenda. They in say the searchable packet, but then I couldn't find it. If you click on the link for that agenda item number five, the minutes, the updated minutes are included. Agenda number, it's only in the searchable minutes. It's not in um, online. It's online as well. Yes. So do you have the agenda in front of you? Uh, it's also in the meeting details online on Insight, as well as in the digital archives. Because, so on, online, if I go to agenda number five, yes. all I see is draft minutes, right? Yes. So where am I supposed to find the, 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 attachment, the draft a, minutes? attachment A draft minutes? So draft minutes is already revised? Yes. Oh, okay. It was provided in this amended agenda that we posted yesterday. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, I thought, oh, I thought that's the old one. Okay. Because in the searchable packet, I still see the old uh, agenda, the, the old minutes. Okay. The council provided following inputs, council reviewed public engagement. Yeah, that's good. There are a lot of uh, more details there. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Great. Okay. So um, before we Yeah. So let's keep this practice for the future minutes. Okay. Um, let's look at item nine before we go back and um, the other ones. Um, so I, the only issue I have with this is we're trying to, uh, what did you call it, Deb? The recessionary, recessionary. budget. Mm -hmm. Budget. So I'm just wondering about, um, is this the time where maybe we, it's okay to fall behind on pavement maintenance? 
realizing that it's going to cost us more money later. Roger, can you yeah. uh, comment on this? Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Good evening, Council. Roger Lee, Director of Public Works. Um, so this really, you know, Stevens Canyon Road um, from Ricardo going up towards um, towards the reservoir. Um, we just found that we've got quite a bit of failures that are occurring up there. And if we delay, the, uh, the failures are just going to continue to um, uh, to accumulate and cause even more costs in the future. So this is a situation where you know, trying to wait and not spend the money now will, will result in increased costs later. So why is the, uh, why was the original contract not sufficient um, with the included contingency from before? What was the contingency in the past? Uh, it was about a $258,000 contingency. Um, we've spent about all but 51,000 of that, uh, mayor. And so the cost to do this work is, uh, about 202,000, I believe. So that's why we're asking for 150,000 more dollars. As far as the reasons why, when we, when we quantified this work, um, cause it was, it was, uh, this project was awarded back in February of, um, of last year. Um, so it was quantified probably in late 2018. We had about 5,000 square feet of failures. And unfortunately, that's just been the, the rate at which these failures have been growing. Okay. You said this is on Stevens Canyon Road between where and where? Well, I always think of it as Ricardo. Uh, that, that's really sort of the first street as you're going down from the reservoir. Um, but yeah, just, just, just as you start to enter into where it turns into Foothill going up up um you know west or south to the reservoir okay and that's all in our city obviously right not this is not county a absolutely we don't we don't okay. go all the way to the reservoir right. area. okay okay well i mean if we have to do this uh we have to do it it's just uh trying to recognize our precarious financial situation right now um question yeah, sure Thank you. Yeah, I was just wondering if if we do let it go, what sort of cost? I mean, would we have catastrophic failure of the road? And then, I mean, the, I, I'm 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 with Stephen uh, at heart in in wondering right about things. Um, it, maybe making deferring some decisions until we see how things shape up here. But um, you know, one thing that that would mitigate this is if. You know, a catastrophic failure would result in a lot more money. Uh, that would be that would certainly be worth um, taking into consideration. Can you comment on what um, you know? If we were to let this go for six months or so, what would happen, or what what you imagine could happen, and what the cost might be if we had a catastrophic failure? If that's if that's yeah, what you're yeah. envisioning. Thank yeah, you. Because the I'll take my I'll take uh, the comments off the air here. All right. Yeah, because the 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 area has grown almost uh, almost five x uh, from when they were quantified, say a year or so ago. And um, you know, we went through this winter um, not all that much rain, and if we don't get all that much rain now, perhaps it wouldn't continue to grow and 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 cause a safety issue. But it's not it's not something that I would um, that I'd recommend. I. I, I would rather propose, uh, you know, saving some dollars somewhere else, but I, I would, I would, I recommend, you know, getting these dollars into the street to, to stop. I'm sorry, but w what is growing? The, the, the failures in the street. So, you know, what was 5,000 square feet a year ago is now 20,000 square feet. Okay. Um, council member Chow, you had your hand raised. Yeah. Hello. Hi, I, so this is a stretch of road that's used by the truck from Stevens Creek Quarry or Lehigh Cement. Mm -hmm. Are they may, may be contributing to the deteriorating condition from 5,000 to 20,000 mm -hmm. square feet? Is it possible they can contribute to the cost? And so that's first question. Second is uh, right now, is this project ongoing? Is this considered an essential um, project? And uh, the third one is construction cost. I think in the past couple of years, cost has been high. However, maybe the cost will be lower right now, or we possibly see a lower cost of construction for this project. 
So that's all. Okay. Um, yeah, so this uh, Stevens Creek quarry is, is what's adjacent to the reservoir. So there, there is a lot of frequent and heavy truck traffic going up and down Stevens Canyon. Uh, as far as them contributing for it, that, that is something that's being um, investigated um, the, between Public Works and the city attorney's office uh, in terms of cost uh, sharing on that, but there, there's nothing in place uh, on that now. Um, maintenance of our roads is considered a, an essential facility, uh, so it is um, uh, it, it is within the uh, the order for us to do this type of work. Um, you know, to your question, could we get a better price uh, on this work um, uh, elsewhere? Um, you know, it, it is possible. I mean, it, it is over two hundred thousand dollars worth of work, and that and that would be an option. We we could let this uh, let this work out, um, you know, separately on a project of its own, um, but because we did get a price from the, the current phase one contractor who who we're under contract now, so. That would be an option and, and you know we would just put it out to bid and see what would happen um i would prefer that than not doing not, not trying to do the work at all okay uh council member willie you have your hand raised so um my question pertains to just trying to better understand what the required uh, repairs are you know, trying to visualize what it might be, but you know, who's to say I'm right or wrong? Are we talking about uh, cracks in the tarmac and preventing water from getting underneath? Or are we talking about chunks of tarmac that are actually gone? Or are we actually talking about uh, the roadway actually kind of sliding away? It seems to me when I looked at CIP projects uh, a year ago, uh, Regnard Road, had an item saying that uh, the road was in jeopardy of kind of sliding. You know, to what degree, you know, what, what is it that we really need to be uh, repairing or maintaining? Uh, in the future, uh, a picture or two would really help. Thank you. Okay, um, yes, you're, you're correct uh, with Rignart Road. That was, th those are different types of failure where the, the, the slopes were in, in, not stable. These are stress failures in the wheel path of where the trucks are at. So, so they're um, they're like alligator, where all the all the cracks, both horizontal and, and um, longitudinal, they're intersecting like a um, like an alligator uh, crack. And um, you know, once that happens, the rate of failure it 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 just increases uh, uh, quickly, especially when there's more weight put on it and and you have water from from wet weather. So th th that's the type of failures that we have. Um, if it, if it continues, you know, those, those intersecting cracks are gonna to start to come, come loose. That's where you start having potholes. And then that's, that's where you just have a rapid failure of the street. That's, and that's what we're trying to get ahead of. So Great. thank you, Ro Roger, what's our, and the city attorney as well, what's our ability to have weight limits on our roads? Well, I, I believe they're, they're regulated by the by the vehicle code, um, I don't think we can, as a city, we, we can't go lower than what the vehicle code would allow, but maybe Heather could have more to add on that. I'd have to look into that specifically. Um, there are uh, limits on what cities can do to regulate use of roads, um, but we can look into that. I, I do know this is a, you know, obviously it's a designated truck route. Right. I mean, it's, you know, the trucks are destroying the road and our residents are paying for the repairs, which seems right. not right. And I will note also that, you know, we are actively involved in, in reviewing and commenting on applications by the courts to the county and, you know, addressing these issues could be part of that going forward. Okay. Um, so, I mean, Roger, I trust you when you say we need to do this, so. Um, I'm willing to move for move items five and nine. Is I'll that second that. Okay. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Um, Kirsten, can you uh, conduct a roll call vote? Council member Chow? Aye. Council member Sinks? Aye. Council member Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Paul? Aye. 
Mayor Sharp? Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Okay, great. Uh, I guess we have no second readings of ordinances. Is that true? That's correct. Okay, so we are on to, and no public hearing, so we're on to ordinances and action items. Item 12, consider participation in and funding for the Santa Clara, Santa Cruz counties airport roundtable on aircraft noise in the South Bay. Uh, so I've been attending these meetings, even though I am not the uh, alternate or the primary, um, because they occur at 1 p.m. in the afternoon when people that have full-time jobs have to work. And I actually can't go to these either because I have another meeting that same day um, every time the meeting is held, although I cut one short to go to it. Uh, in any case, is Andy Jordan on the line? Yes, she is, Mr. Mayor. Would you like me to um, Okay, well, first let's, do, first let's do our staff report and then we'll have Andy speak. So do we have a staff report? I don't think we do on this one. Oh, okay. Because I think it was a discussion. Yeah, discussion. Of okay. So, okay, before Andy speaks, I'll say I, I, I'm torn. I'm unhappy at the way this these meetings have been conducted. Um, the time of the meeting is disrespectful to the public. Other air, aircraft roundtable, airport noise roundtables meet in the evening when the public can participate and when it's easier for council members and other elected officials to participate. Um, I am upset with the way the chair disrespects the residents that come to speak, often cutting them down to 60 seconds of, uh, of communications on agenda items. And I, I don't like the amount of money we're spending for facilitation. It's over $200,000 a year we're paying to a part-time facilitator. Um, that said, I, when I was in Washington a few weeks ago, I met with the FAA, um, not as an official of the round table, I was not authorized, but we did talk about things that could be done to mitigate aircraft noise. Uh, so I, I'm really not in favor of pulling out, but I really would like the city's association to work on making some changes to the round table to uh, have a time that's more convenient to residents to follow the Brown Act, which this was very upsetting. There's multiple violations of the Brown Act, and it was not just in one meeting. It, it's continuous. Um, so I think you almost need an attorney there to keep it on track. Um, but that's all I have. So, Andy, would you like to speak? Um, I will. Let's see. Where's Andy? She's still there. I don't. Ah, okay. I'll, I'll unmute you. Okay. Uh, welcome. Great. Thank you. Oh, I have to switch. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, there. That's good. We see. Okay, it. great. So, uh, Mayor and Council Members, um, thank you for including me tonight in your meeting. Um, I just wanted to give you a brief little history and um, just to remember how we got here. Um, the roundtable. Um, in two thousand in in July one of two thousand and seventeen, we received a formal request from our uh, congressional uh, members. Uh, from representatives um, Eshu, Kana, and Panetta, and they asked us to uh, form a roundtable to find a, a recommendation uh, to forming uh, to form a roundtable. Uh, this was to um, address community concerns, and also it was a, um, a formal action from the select committee that had been set up in, I believe, 2015. Um, so the city's association in August, uh, they voted to, uh, to, to form an ad hoc committee and the members of the ad hoc committee uh, included Palo Alto, Mountain View, Saratoga, Los Altos Hills, Cupertino, Sunnyvale, and Morgan Hill. Um, we looked at a, different ways that the roundtables were um, 
all across the country were how they were formed. Um, but we had some interesting issues with our round table in that we were going to be serving two counties and two and two airports. Um, we looked at um, the ad hoc committee created bylaws and MOUs and they were based on the SFO round table. They created a funding formula, formula by looking at the amount of money that other uh, round tables um, were spending. Of uh, the timeline, so you can see um, it actually was kind of a quick timeline um, considering that um, there were very few staff people involved in, in pulling this together, um, myself, and then there were staff people from various cities that helped at different, um, at different um, uh, points within this timeline. So you can see in July, 2017, we received the request and in October of 2018, the board voted to form a round table and that was after receiving input from jurisdictions in Santa Cruz County as well as Santa Clara County. November of 2008, we put out an RFP and uh, we made an, we had, we did interviews in 2000, December of 2018 and um, uh, hired uh, ESA who is now the consultant. Um, uh, and, and just to note that ESA was uh, the only uh, only submittal that we received um, that had actually been involved uh, and run a roundtable before. Um, they also have a stellar, stellar reputation um, in the country. And uh, so we had our first meeting in February 2019. And then in August of 2019, we extended funding for another six months. Um, the challenges that remained before are still still exist today. Who will lead a roundtable when no jurisdiction or airport wants to take the lead? Um, while we did adopt um, uh, while we did adopt the MOU and bylaws from the SFO roundtable, um, it we can't really adopt their their function unless one of this uh, the county one of the counties or one of the cities want to take over. Um, they actually employ the, the administrator for the round table. Um, and so they're, they're, the way they staff it is a little bit different. And so that is one of the challenges that we've had to lead. And in order to get it up off the ground, we chose to have a consultant slash facilitator. And that was um, part of our RFP process. And that was what we defined that we needed. Um, and so the staffing continues to be an issue. and. Uh, I hear I hear the members loud and clearly, and the members will of the roundtable will have to discuss this about um, in Santa Clara County about about other options that we may uh, that we may do um, uh, to try to bring those costs down so that we would have more money for technical support. And then also the meeting time for 13 jurisdictions um, and an available venue. This was actually much more difficult than I had anticipated. Um, uh, evenings that were available are uh, Friday nights and, uh, and the only day was Wednesdays, but the only time that we could get um, a meeting location was Wednesday afternoon. And so we have had to, um, uh, we've been at the mercy of our host who often have meetings before and after us. And so they slide us in for maybe a three hour time chunk or um, for um, usually about three hours. And so we've had to sometimes abruptly end our meetings. Um, but you can see we've created a place where citizens can go and um, have questions. Um, our um, website that has a lot of information um, and this is um, kind of a breakdown of, of the things that the roundtable has done. And um, uh, while I know folks are frustrated and wish we had moved forward on, on, on other items, uh, we did uh, finally reach conclusion on creating a strategic plan and a work program that will now guide us. And if you can see by this chart, that process took a little bit longer um, than we had anticipated. Um, here you can see the work program took, um, uh, it took five meetings. Um, and then the strategic plan um, also took four meetings. So that process took longer than, than we had uh, anticipated. Um, this is the budget. We're keeping, we're holding the budget flat. Um, 
the first budget was actually a ca calendar year budget um, because that's just the timeline that is what happened with uh, when the board adopted it and when we were able to get going. And so then we, um, the round table then approved a six month budget um, amendment so that we could carry it through the fiscal year of um, into the end of June. And so this is asking for what, what you're considering today is a proposed fiscal year 2021 budget. Um, we're gonna hold it flat. Um, your, uh, your contribution would be the same previously as what it was before and that's $17,926.99. Um, for many of our jurisdictions, it's actually cheaper than what they've spent on consultant time um, on this issue. Um, and our goals remain the same. By creating a round table, we have created our jurisdictions and our citizens a venue for, um, uh, to work with the FAA. If you're an individual city or if you're an individual citizen, you cannot, um, the FAA does not wanna to talk to you. And this is one of their, um, by, by, by participating in a round table, it's, it's one of their sanctioned um, ways that they will work with you. Um, per the bylaws, the round table is to become independent. Um, the Cities Association is just helping get this off the ground. Um, so, and our goal is still to bring all the stakeholders to the table, including the airports. Currently we have SFO, but they're not a full member. They're not a voting member. They, they don't contribute at this time. I mean, our, our goal would be to have so that they contribute as well. Um, and, uh, and our goal is still to, to find a better way to determine staffing and funding. So with that, I will, um, I'm here to answer any of your questions. Okay, um, I did wanna point out the, the who's missing from the round table is San Jose and the San Jose airport. And when I met with the FCC, uh, sorry, the FAA uh, a few weeks ago, they were telling me, oh, in, um, in Massachusetts for Logan airport or Massport, they call that area, uh, they're working on a new dispersion program where they can spread the flights out like it was before, where the noise is not all over one community. They said, all you got to do is have your airport request this. And I said, well, therein lies the problem. Our roundtable doesn't include the airport. And they were kind of shocked about that. Um, so I just, just want to ask Andy, what would we have to do to get San Jose and San Jose Airport to join this roundtable? Um, well, we've been working on it. We're still having conversations with them, but I think that all of our communities still have to try to keep the lines of communication open. And I think that if San Francisco joins the roundtable, I think that I think that San Jose will come along uh, event, you know, but we just have to, we have to show them that we're willing to work together. And um, I just think it's gonna take a little bit of time Okay, um, that's all I have. Anyone else uh, have any 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 raised hands about this? Um, also, just it, uh, Mayor, if I may um, sure. address that you brought up the Brown Act issues, and um, I am aware of two instances of the of a Brown Act issue, Correct. and they were they were remedied immediately. And um, I'm unclear. The first one was kind of a big one, and um, but it was remedied immediately. Um, yeah, the second one was not remedied, the one that I was aware of. Um, the second one, the, uh, I think that they was going to be remedied at the end, but we got kicked out of the room. So it, it, um, uh, the meeting had to end abruptly. And so members did get up and speak. Um, I, again, I'm, uh, it does happen and then you remedy the situation, but I would not describe it as a um, ongoing problem. Um, okay. I think they're both unfortunate events. And, and regarding the facilitation, I've talked to several members and they say, we hired this facilitator for all this, this relatively high amount of money. And then they said, we have to redo the work they do because it's unsatisfactory regarding the work program and the, um, what was the other? I, I think that, I think that the people, I, I don't, I, I actually don't believe okay. that everyone felt that their work was unsatisfactory. I think that a few people that signed up for that committee felt it was unsatisfactory. Okay. Um, okay. 
Thank you. Um, anyone else from the council wish to uh, ask any questions about this? I see Liang Chao, uh, council member Chao, you have your hand raised. Yeah. Hello, hi. So I understand that this facilitator comes with great experience. What of his experience, and most of the $250,000 is used to pay his consultant fee, right? Correct. Could you say how much it is per meeting um, for the two hour meeting? And then what exactly that he has provided with experience that makes a difference? Because from the couple ones that I have attended, it doesn't seem to be such a, I cannot see the value, but maybe I wasn't there. So can you speak on that? Um, sure. Am I? Um, yes, you're up. See? Okay. All right. Um, hold on here. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so this is this is the. Um, you can see the the table, correct? Did I successfully share my screen or yes, not? Yes, yes, we can see okay, the Okay, great. So you can see the IFP gateway. That's an example that is presented. Um, uh, that is that is all technical work. Um, uh, can you maximize the slide because it's kind right, of- Right, it's hard to say. Um, you, are, you need the presenter view, not like edit. Right now it seems you are in a view where you can edit the slide. Is yeah. that better? Better. Yeah, much okay. better. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so if you can see the um, uh, noise 101, um, loop five, uh, I think the air traffic 101 may have been done by the FAA. Pirate two was done by the FAA and um, also by our consultant. Um, and then the work program and the South Flow program, uh, all, I mean, all of this he has had his hand in and he has done, but because we have spent so much time in the IFP, um, I'm sorry, in the work program and the strategic plan, he has not done as much technical work. But now that we have gone and created kind of a program for us to move forward, um, you will see, uh, you will start to see more technical work from him. And also, you know, we're bringing we're bringing we're bringing jurisdictions together from from two counties where some of the communities are greatly divided about this topic. And so we're bringing all of these people in a very educated and a very passionate citizenry to our meetings and um, trying to find common ground where people start to trust each other. It just doesn't happen immediately. You're just not going to have a meeting and tell everybody, okay, let's take on a big topic and make progress. I mean, it takes a while for everyone to learn to work together. Okay. So, and, um, um, uh, Council Member Chow, I also believe that you attended a few meetings at the very beginning. And, um, and it did, you know, it, it takes it takes a while for everyone to gel and to figure out I mean, the first meeting you um, I think believe you were at the first meeting where a chair was elected, and when the chair was elected, I mean she did not know she was running a meeting that day. Um, you know we had had conversations with people that names that we had heard or who are being nominated to prepare them, but you know it so that, that it's kind of a rough meeting. <laughs> okay. Um... Council Member Sinks. Thank you very much. Um, I, I know it, you know, when we got the request from our Congress people to stand this up, it was a, a daunting task. Um, I think we, we did it in, in my year as president of the Cities Association. And um, it's, it's hard to say no. I think it's, it's really hard work. Um, obviously, they, I think the Congress people did it because they said, you know, this is how the FAA works with communities. Uh, so, so I get that. Um, I think 
you know, you have certain residents who live directly under the flight paths of these planes. Um, because of now the, the precise control, precise repeated control, uh, you have, you know, planes that can be coming by uh, more than one a minute. If you happen to live under the flight path, I'm sure you're quite upset and wonder why we can't go back to a, a prior system where the paths are dithered or, or by some means uh, varied so that you don't have to suffer. So, so I get why the Congress people would like us to, to work on this. And I'm, I'm generally uh, supportive of continuing, but I, I do wonder, right, um, whether at the end of the day, uh, this is going to, we will see some movement. And, and I guess my, my question to you, Andy, is if uh, from, from the prior uh, group that got together and prepared a, a set of recommendations, it was chaired by Semidian, um, has the FAA acted uh, to implement the recommendations that this big group has come along with? Do they have a timeline for, for doing so? Are we just speaking to an administration that frankly doesn't care? Um, or an agency that independent of, of whose president doesn't care? So I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, what I've heard anecdotally is they haven't implemented any of it. And it's been what, three years since it, it that committee concluded or something like that? Maybe you can refresh my memory. I, um... I would, I'm, I'm not the most, uh, best person to talk about it technically, or, um, but I know that they're still waiting on a lot of um, the recommendations um, from the select committee and for them to be implemented. Um, Have they implemented any of the recommendations that the community came up with? Yes, I believe they have. Okay. All right. That's encouraging. The, the, Congressional offices and um, uh, Tom Pike from Congressman Kana's office could not come, um, could not join the meeting tonight, but he wanted us to express that uh, they still feel this is the best way to move forward um, to, uh, to try to see if, if year two can, if we can uh, get more movement ahead and, and they're still supportive of, of us. Uh, trying to make this a go i think it would be better if 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 we could get the airports on on board and i think they will eventually okay um yeah i think from my conversation with the faa in washington it's without the airports on board it's unlikely the faa will take the recommendations that we want seriously and so I mean, I'm willing to continue this. It's not not a huge amount of money. Um, I'm not sure anyone from Cupertino will be able to attend, um, but I'm certainly willing to try one more year of this and uh, see what happens. Hey, Andy. Yes. I would assume that there's been some requests made of the um, congressional, the federal level uh, folks to see if they can compel membership of the airports. And we are working on that. Or compel the FAA. There's there's almost no way to compel them unless you have the feds pushing on them. So um, yes, so the congressional offices are very much a partner and they want this to work. Their congressional offices here for Santa Clara and Santa Cruz counties are, are not happy that San Mateo County has a round table, which is the SFO round table. Um, they feel like uh, the citizens in those, in our congressional districts are being treated differently. And I know that there's a lot of conversations with the airports and with the FAA to try to, try to help us be successful. Um, this is also compounded by the fact that there are a lot more round tables all across the country. Um, and so the, uh, and also, as you know, that there's been a lot of defunding of various government agencies and, or just not reappointing. So it, it our timing may not have been the best <laughs> for some of these challenges. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so my my follow up question to you is, and and I, I'll put this in the form of a request if Stephen's willing to support this. I mean, I haven't been to these meetings, and um, I don't care to be our representative, quite frankly. Oh but, darn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is a thankless job. Um, um, but eventually, right? We would hope to see some progress on behalf of of those residents who are impacted and those who may be impacted if if the if things change. I mean, um, uh, my my request would be to um, somebody the prior committee. I'd like to know what has actually come of the prior effort. The prior committee did did you say some things have happened? Let's hear about those things. And if they haven't, I think we ought to put a request back into the, uh, you know, our Congress people to say, hey, uh, this committee uh, concluded its work on such and such a date um, under, under, under the leadership of uh, Chair Samidian. We'd like to know what concrete got done with the FAA. And uh, we'd, we'd like to know what you as Congress people then can push on that work is done. We should see results from that. Um, but before we we go funding the next one on and on and on ad infinitum, we'd like to see some progress from the result the region has already uh, put in to do this. So I, I'm I can I am supportive of continuing this for a limited time. Thank you. Okay, I see uh, John and Leong. John, you have your hand up. Go. Yeah. So are you hearing me? Yes. Go. Yeah. So did I hear right that our contribution, is it per year or per six months, the 17,000? Uh, that is a, that is a year. Year. Great. So it's not all that much. Um, am I hearing it right that if the airport were to say it's happy to change its flight pass, that that would go a long way in making progress? Well, I'll just tell you what happened in Massachusetts is the airport and their roundtables working with MIT to develop a way to reintroduce the dispersion that spreads out the, spreads out the flights. Uh, it has not happened yet, but when I mentioned Oh, but that's a great idea. Can we do it? They said, oh, yeah, your airport just has to request it. So that sounds great. I would actually then be asking for that to be one of the uh, short term goals is to try to connect with the, the airport. If that if that really could, you know, um, uh, put the ball down at the end of the field, you know, I would hate to have these months and years tick by and we miss an opportunity like that and so i would like that to be kind of like a a, a short-term goal well it's been a goal to get san jose and the airport to participate but um so far no dice so i do think it's important enough for us to to continue to try for a limited amount of time that I don't think if uh, we should be continuing if it truly doesn't sh show that it's uh, making progress. So again, uh, like Councilman Sink said, I'd sure like to know what the uh, results that have happened um, are, and then the uh, milestone stone goals, um, what they would be, so that we can say, okay, this is what we hope to achieve in, in the next six months and in the next year, and then say, okay, that's worth continuing. Thank you. Okay, uh, Leon. Hello, hi. So I think from you said that FAA would only engage with Cupertino or any of the cities only through the format of round table. So it sounds like we do need to keep it going. However, I'm wondering whether we should reconsider the format. For example, the facilitator, how exactly what's, what we expect of him, what's his scope of work, I'm unclear. Because especially when the 
beginning of the meeting when it's tough, when there are controversy, that's when a good facilitator shine. But I don't see that. And if the facilitator is expert, we are hiring him for his expertise, not for his ability to handle multiple cities, then what exactly we are expecting of him. And then we have now reduced the number of meetings. What that um, contribute to the amount of dollars, he does get paid. And then also I would like that maybe Citizens Association could think about the engagement of uh, residents. I think we need meaningful engagement of residents who a lot of times are more knowledgeable than a lot of council members who are on the round table, but then they are allowed to speak for 60 minutes at a time. Oh, uh, let me interrupt you for one second. Darcy, can you take over for a minute? I have to go do something. Mm -hmm. I'll be back in about two minutes. Okay. So I hoped it would go forward, but I hope Cities Association can think about how to make it more effective working with the facilitator and the residents. Thank you. Okay, great. Any other comments from Council? All right. Well, I'm, I'm curious to know if we have any public comments. Uh, Kirsten, do you have any public comments on this item? I do not have any email comments, Mr. Vice Mayor. And oh, I do see one raised hand now. Lisa Warren is waiting to speak. Okay, great. Welcome, Lisa. There we go. Thanks. So uh, just in hearing this, I'm, I have a question about the participating cities. Because I, I hear your concerns and I've hear, heard them for a while now about whether this is even an effective thing. I agree it needs another chance, but I'm wondering if the cost to the participating cities would go up because I'm assuming other cities are having the same discussion. And let's say you have five cities say, forget it, we're done. Then their contribution financially has to be absorbed by someone. Is that the case? All right, well, thanks for your okay, question. That's all. <laughs> okay, great. Well, you're well within your time limit. Thank you. <laughs> and um, is there anybody um, on Sorry about that. that would like to answer that question? Our mayor's back, so I'll hand over the meeting back to him. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly willing to go ahead for another year. But frankly, I think Andy brought it up and Rod as well we're really going to need a change at the top in order to have any progress um, in compelling the FAA to do anything. Um, we'll see what ha happens with that later on this year. Um, but for now, you know, I'm certainly willing to fund this for another year. I don't know if we need a motion for this. Oh, we do. We do. We do. Okay. I'd like to request, I'll go ahead and, and make that motion. Um, in addition to the staff recommendations, however, um, I'm going to ask that our council request, if this comes back to us in the future and we're considering it again, uh, a balance sheet so we and the public can have a sense of how these dollars are being spent. And I think for the amount of money that we're giving, um, you know, essentially to a consultant, it is fair to ask for a written deliverable so that again, uh, we and the public can know what's been happening. Now, this isn't to cast aspersions. It's not to demand results. Um, I think informationally and educationally, if we're spending collectively a quarter million dollars, it's probably good to have a report uh, so that people would know what is the state of uh, public sentiment with regard to airplane uh, noise in the South Bay. And uh, what have these jurisdictions that have banded together to have a voice in this conversation uh, done at the um, behest of the public and the public dollar? So those are my uh, requests on top of the staff recommendations that A, we uh, have a balance sheet available as to how these dollars are being spent and B, that there be some type of written deliverable. I'm not asking for you know, some, anything overly extensive, but of course, you know, if, if it merits it based upon the work being done, great ad exhibits and whatnot. 
Um, but I think an executive summary, is, in addition to maybe a 15 or 20 page report, is uh, perfectly reasonable to ask for. Thanks very much. That's my motion. Okay, I'll second that motion. So can I make a friendly amendment? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so can we also ask that um, consider meaningful engagement of residents so that they are not limited to just one minute of meeting, possibly forming submit subcommittee of residents to, to work with the uh, facilitator on certain issues? Well, I mean, I don't think we have that ability to um, impose uh, on the committee that they uh, provide the residents with more time. I mean, that's a decision that the that the chair makes, and and we elect the chair. I'm happy to, uh, otherwise, we are supporting moving forward with exactly the same format, except. Uh, asking for a uh, budget. Um, okay. I'm, yes, I'm that's right. That, I'm happy to incorporate that request uh, into my motion uh, that we ask for um, a, a more extensive uh, mechanism for public engagement. Um, whether the committee uh, decides to take that up is up to the committee and that's understood. So, okay, that's fine. Okay. okay. So we have the motion with the amendments. Um, Mayor? No, did yes. You, did you want to confirm or change existing council representatives? That was possibly part of the motion. Um, so who are the representatives now? They're, um, council member Chow is the primary and council member Willie is the alternate representative. Right. I mean, I, th I think the issue going forward, you know, even if we fund this, uh, we may not necessarily have someone to send to the meetings. I know um, these are two council members with full-time jobs, and this is an issue with this meeting, the meeting time, which frankly disrespects both elected officials and the residents that, that want to speak. But again, the committee selected, selected the meeting time and, uh, you know, one city cannot, doesn't have any ability to change that. Um, so no, let's not change the representatives as the mayor. I'm allowed to go apparently in place of the primary or the alternate. And to the extent that I can do it, I will continue to go if possible. Maybe so, let's start teleconferencing. <laughs> well, right. That would be wonderful. The teleconferencing <laughs> meetings would be great. And actually, uh, Andy, I think people can call into the meeting, can't they? Yes, they can. But yeah, there's no teleconference capability, um, although certainly uh, I'm sure City of Santa Clara has that capability. Uh, or you don't need, all you need is an internet connection. You don't need, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's a very good suggestion. To, and I will bring that up the next meeting I go to if we can. Yeah, uh, do maybe Zoom. I I can make it. Um, happen um, in the future. That for last, last time was my first week on the job. So okay, in the future I can arrange. Uh, okay, so we have a motion with the amendments. Um, I and we had a second, I believe. Is that right, Kirsten? Yes. Okay, so I think you can do a roll call. Councilmember Chow. Aye. Councilmember Sinks. Aye. Councilmember Willie. Aye. Vice Mayor Paul? Aye. Mayor Scharf? Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Okay. Um, so we've been going for about two hours now. This next one may be a long one. So why don't we take five minutes and come back at uh, uh, 840.
30. I can't. This is Rod. I'm here. Okay. Leong, are you there? No. Darcy, are you there? I'm here. John, are you here? Council Member Chow, are you there? Council Member uh, Willie. Well, so we, have, we have a quorum. Okay. Yeah, I'm here, but I'm not seeing on the screen. Well, you see Deb's presentation on the screen, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but usually I see the us participants on the side. Oh, sidebar. yeah, I think you got to exit full screen to do that. Up in the little right hand. Yep, corner. you're right. Thank okay. you. Perfect. Okay, is Councilman Michelle <clears throat> back? Well, in any case, um, we have a quorum to can, to start. So we're here on to item 13, fiscal year 2020-21 city work program. Recommended action to adopt the city work program. So let's have the staff report. Okay, so can you hear me okay? Oh, yes. Okay, so um, I'm going to go through my presentation, but I say that with that this was the proposed work program with substituted items from the 1920 work program that didn't complete that council decided to uh, onboard into 2021. But I say that without, um, at the time, knowing that COVID was going to hit and its potential effect on our budget. So I, I'm going to spend time going through it, but I would say that focusing a lot on the details at this point is not going to be helpful because what I'm gonna probably have to do is come back to you with it um, uh, along with the budget discussion for 2021. So I say that and I'll start. So this is my schedule, beautiful schedule that got blown out of the water. <laughs> so um, as you can see the CIP budget, but I'm just gonna focus on uh, the March 31st date for this presentation. We're still going in order. The way to look at it is the schedule is just kind of way stretched out because of um, our current situation. Not gonna talk about this too much, not gonna talk about that too much. So to start with this, let me, um, if someone wants to follow, uh, oops, sorry. If someone wants to follow along with me in terms of, um, sorry, I'm going backwards, oops. Um, you start with your attachment B, which has the details of what um, we took in and what we moved. And this first portion is by office rather than goal. Um, the items that were added by council uh, was two-way online communication and a study session on regulating uh, diverse businesses, diverse, oops, I can't read my own. Um, I'll just do it this way. Diversified retails, small retailers. Um, and then items that we traded, and we did this in a combination of the, the things where they're similar sized and staff expertise. So we removed the new sister city relationship and uh, removed the visitor centers, the visitor center from the small business development center um, item. So we just, uh, tweaked it if you look at if you want to look at your attachment B. For community development, most of the ad backs were um, in this department. Um, so it, it was also an attempt to kind of level load the work also amongst departments. Um, so you'll see some of that here happening as well. Um, establish establish pre-approved ADU plans. I'm just going to hit a, on a couple of these. Of course, the Valco specific plan, um, the GPA or gateway process, the general plan authorization process, and then items we removed uh, to accommodate the additions were similar sized in totality, we thought, um, conditional use permit evaluation and um, the R1 ordinance. 
um, community development, we also um, moved three items uh, to the Parks and Rec folks because it was basically the Parks and Rec Commission, I'm mean, sorry, the Fine Arts Commission that was looking at this. Typically, um, the Fine Arts Commission is, is uh, facilitated by somebody from the Parks and Rec Department. So we moved those over for 2021. For the rest of 1920, they are facilitated by the Planning Department. In Public Works, we added um, the traffic congestion map and um, identifying solutions. Um, we didn't really take anything out of removal because we had enough room and operations to do, to do part of this. And then, um, uh, so that's the end of the changes and the swap outs. If you then want to look at um, attachment A or not, um, now I'm trying to tell you what it looks like, the new items under each goal uh, going forward for 2021. So under public engagement and transparency, um, I pull on item number one just to let you know that um, the way the council left it um, at the end of the last session was for me to follow up with uh, Vice Mayor Paul. Um, and so uh, we left it on the um, work program. Um, these are the eight items that are under public engagement and transparency at the moment. Uh, let's see. Under transportation, the shuttle bus pilot program and regional transformative transit project initiatives. Also, the details are on attachment A. Improving traffic flow and alleviating congestion as a subset of transportation. And you can see it there. Associated with this also is the expansion of the bike ped commission into I forget what we called it, but basically multimodal or um, I forget what we called the commission, but we're working, we'd be working on the Muni code to adjust, expand that commission to include other transportation solutions. Housing, uh, now be patient because this goes on for a little bit. This is just the first part. Um, of course, a study session on the Rena, next RENA cycle. Housing strategies. Uh, established pre-approved ADU plans, and then a continuation on. Uh, if you recall, council wanted a subset um, called out specifically to help the homeless. Um, so we would review our health, housing, and human services funding grants, um, housing program for De Anza College students, um, research governor's $1.4 billion pledge towards homelessness, and uh, transportation solutions for service providers, which also might be subject to some grant money. Under sustainability and fiscal strategy, um, as per council direction, we split it up and made it a little more descriptive. Typical sustainability and then fiscal st sustainability. Um, you can see that the uh, property tax I mean, uh, reviewing the property tax share um, and uh, investigating other alternatives to City Hall are still on there. Next, we have the quality of life and we split it apart between air quality and noise um, as well as public safety. Um, let's see, emergency services, yeah. Uh, and then, um, pollution monitoring, doing some pilots through some, adding some sensors to our current um, collection of sensors. Continue on with quality of life under recreation and uh, access to goods and services. Of course, the uh, Blackberry Farm Golf Course and its um, supporting system out there need work. Uh, the strategic plan for parks and recreation and a study session on regulating diversified retail uses. That's access to goods and services as defined by, as defined under the quality of life goal. 
And then the last part of the quality of life goal has to do with um, a few more planning items, heart of the city plan, Valco specific plan, um, reviewing the environmental review committee, and of course, studying uh, the residential mixed use um, residential design standards. Again, I end on our uh, path forward towards a budget. Um, again, I would tell you that I think that we've been disrupted by COVID. And so in the coming weeks, um, not only would I re review the 1920 budget effects so far of COVID, um, but also then what its impact would be, what its resulting impact would be on 2021. And likely I would have to bring this whole work program back to discuss with council um, what the potential might be. If we all bounce back from it and we get um, you know, financial support from the different resources that are emerging now, it could be that, that I brought, bring back a full work program such as the one currently proposed, the, the one that I'm proposing to adopt. Um, so I'm still proposing you adopt a full work program um, in, so that we have, staff has direction for 2021, but know that I could bring it back to talk to council more about it should we need to um, make some changes to it. Any questions? Uh, before we do questions, uh, mm -hmm. Madam City Clerk, do we have any uh, uh, anyone from the public that wishes to speak? I do not have any email comments and I do see two attendees waiting, but I, if you'd like to raise your hand at this time, press star nine if you're on a phone. And I don't see them raising their hands, Mr. Mayor. Okay, great. So we can uh, bring it back to council. Thank you, Deb. And uh, I'm sure we are going to uh, have to think of modifying this um, based on things like revenue. Uh, but the, the one thing that we really need to be careful of is some projects have a timeline that we really don't want to interrupt. And I'm thinking of things like um, the library expansion even though you know th that's quite a bit of money, um, there's a timeline there. So I don't think we wanna, I think we have to be cognizant of what can be delayed without much of an impact and what would cost us money if we do delay it. Absolutely. Um, with, with that, um, let's bring it back. Uh, who wants to raise their hand and go first? Or I can just call on people. Uh, let's go from longest serving to least serving. So Rod, do you want to go? Thank you. Um, I mean, what I appreciate about this is we've had several prior really long meetings. And I think our comments have been incorporated for now. We could spend another three hours noodling on this, but I think, you know, the important discussion is going to come, right? We, we know we're going to have to refactor the budget. <clears throat> we know that our TOT is going to be down. We know that property taxes may falter. We know that business to business taxes may falter. Hard to say exactly, right? Property tax, probably not so much, but um, we know there will be uh, a substantial economic uh, impacts and we need to be prepared to, um, uh, uh, we're going to have to respond uh, because at the end of the day, right, we need a, a budget that if we do go into reserves, um, doesn't, doesn't really, um, it leaves us in sound financial shape. And so I'll leave it there. I don't, I, uh, I respect uh, Deb's interest in saying, you know, uh, we've had the detailed meetings, we've been through it line by line. Uh, let's, um, let's pass this and then get on with the, the harder work, which is to go figure out uh, where revenues are gonna be uh, based on a scenario of doing this for three months and six months uh, or whatever it is, I don't know. Um, and then and then go see, go try to figure out, uh, given the timeline and revenues, um, you know, which which items, uh, as Steven said, right, are, are critical. I might have a different set than he is, but I, 
I don't think tonight's the night to to go through and try to make set those hard priorities. I do know we have uh, city staff and we, we wanna keep our uh, city staff uh, gainfully employed. I would think that an important thing to, to, to handle. I think we uh, need to <clears throat> be thoughtful about how these monies that will be flowing in from federal state uh, governments uh, uh, impact us, uh, whether we're involved in administrating that money or just helping to get the word out. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna withhold um, trying to get into the details. Thank you. Great. Okay. So I will point out that I'll give each council member no more than five minutes for their input. So next, um, Darcy. All right. Thanks, Mayor. I, I agree with the general idea of let's keep this brief. We've had multiple sessions on this, uh, with regard to the state of the, uh, draft uh, plan as it stands. Uh, I'm fine with the items, but I'm also fine with maintaining that flexibility uh, in order to allow the city manager and staff uh, to uh, discharge their duties, especially given the fact that uh, we have such an unprecedented public health crisis uh, that we're dealing with here. And so I'll just leave my comments at that. Um, I think it's a very thoughtful um, group of, uh, of, of, of tasks that we've considered over the past uh, several months. Um, I do want to say that our city manager has done a really excellent job in general of streamlining a lot of our processes, but also committing them to writing um, as well as a schedule. And so um, I think this is uh, not the ideal point in, in history to be looking at the culmination of our very first um, effort to define a city work program in this kind of manner. Um, but you know, again, perhaps it is a good time in the sense that uh, we're testing the robustness of it uh, from the very, uh, very beginning. So I'm fine with all the items here. Um, and with regard to some of the uh, very, um, very pressing items um, like homelessness, um, like the questions surrounding, um, you know, our balance, the economy, uh, we really need to be looking at what happens in the upcoming uh, several weeks, a couple of months. Uh, and so I would just say, if we can add anything to this, it's the notion of having uh, good flexibility and being able to uh, revisit this uh, and giving our city manager the appropriate amount of discretion to um, make those types of recommendations and, and even uh, moving an item or two here uh, you know, off as needed. So thanks very much for the work, and um, you know, hopefully we we all get past this successfully. Okay, great, uh, Council Member Chow. So you are not commenting first? Uh, no, I'll, I'll go. Okay. I, I already went. I, okay. I said all, I so, said all I had to say. Um, I'll start. There is one minor comment about uh, Rancho Re Reno Cada. It's just a title. It should be uh, about the swimming pool spatial district, right? It's not just the neighborhood. You might sure. want to uh, clarify that. Point taken. Then on the housing, I think um, housing short housing uh, housing strategies. I think I want to clarify a little bit. I think we. The mayor has emphasized all along, it's not a housing shortage, it's an affordable housing shortage. So the housing strategy is uh, all about affordable housing. And also for a city like us, we don't build seat house, we don't build the housing. We can only regulate and we depend on state, federal and other funding to build affordable housing. So I think we need to emphasize that in our work program, maybe clarify in the project objective so that we emphasize it's really the funding, the city needs funding. The League of Cities every year in their priority, they ask for more funding for affordable housing. They didn't get it, but the cities keep getting blamed for not building enough housing. But we need funding for that. And another thing I hope that we emphasize in our uh, project objective would be job housing ratio, because this is something that the regional agency, the ABAC, MTC, they are 
considered, but then they have thrown it out of the window. They are not considering the balance. So we as a city, Cupertino, has, that has been our emphasis. It, by even not, uh, not approving a lot of office like a lot of other cities do, we sacrifice, but then that's our value. So I hope, um, for example, under number one, in, under housing, in the project objective, um, which is regarding renal cycle, that's include consider job housing ratio in there. And the number two for for housing strategy, that's uh, emphasize that once say, we uh, need funding. Count, it, Council member Chow, there is a statement that says, including evaluating sites for potential up zoning and jobs housing ratio, ratio and statistics. Yeah, so it's all it all focused on housing. So I, I think we need to bring the discussion of uh, housing and office uh, ratio, a balanced uh, housing and office ratio here when we consider this all strategy. Because the region, the regional is only only considers housing, 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 but office affect housing, housing affect of office. Housing shortage is because of overdevelopment of office. So even though the regional agency are not emphasizing that, we need to include that in our study, okay? And so for number two, housing strategies, I, I hope that we consider one thing is exactly what's the reality of funding situation for BMR housing when we talk about strategy. And then the second thing is, um, I hope we, I think in the past few years, this, it's on the city work program to revise the BMR menu to include a certain percentage for ELI and moderate income. That I brought up on February 14th, 24th also, that's still not included. It, we have been putting it on the, the work program, but we have not implemented. It could be under number two, two or could be under number three, but number three right now is just working with nonprofit. But if we can look at modifying our BMR menu, that means when the next project comes along, want to build along our transit corridor, we can require a certain percentage of ELI, which we cannot right now. Okay, so I hope that we include that in the housing strategy. And another thing is, uh, the third thing is, density bonus um, ordinance. Our density bonus ordinance right now is not clear how much extra height or waivers people can claim once they go beyond the ordinance, the, the, the limit. For example, they can go up to 35%, but maybe they added only one extra percent, but then they could uh, claim a lot of waivers. Where does that make sense? I think other cities like San Francisco have more clear guidelines and we need to consider that so that our guideline give us the kind, uh, the kind, the percentage of uh, BMR housing that we deserve so that we don't provide the relaxed standard without extra. Okay, so you're at five and a half minutes already. Are you done? Okay, so I can, I have more, I can come back. Okay, uh, John. <clears throat> okay, so um, I think this is this and the budget are you know two of our most important responsibilities to the uh, community, and <clears throat> I realize that the near term in front of us with this uh, uh, COVID nineteen is really going to cause things not to play out the way we would normally expect them. So that being said, we're talking about the work program and we've got somewhere around or over 70 items and they're all important to the community, but they all can't be number one priorities. So what I would ask, what I am asking is that between the five of us, we pick the top 10 items. Maybe we each pick two, such that those items are going to 
really move forward. And I heard Councilman Paul mention the library. Absolutely. But if all 70 are ranked the same, I, I just don't feel that at the end of six months, at the end of the year, we're going to be seeing the progress that we will say, wow, we really did what we started. Well, everything moved, but not very far for anything. So, so I'm, as, I'm asking that we actually pull out or single out the top 10 items and that we actually ask for a quarterly update on those 10 so that we then can see the ones that are the most important to us are in fact significantly moving forward during each of those quarters. And um, uh, uh, city manager had some comments there. Feel free. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was just gonna say that it, it does get a little confusing, but of course, you know, we're gonna look at 1920 also, but of course the library and everything is moving forward because it's in 1920. And primarily I'm looking at 1920's effect, the income effect on 2021. So it's it's a little bit of, I'm just trying to not mix up the fiscal years too much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So at any rate, again, my, my request for the council is that we do identify the top 10 and that we also ask the city manager to give us a quarterly update on those top 10. And I'll toss out that, you know, one of the highest ones, I mean, the mayor said that some things just can't wait. Absolutely. And I, I feel that uh, Valco is so important to this community. We just can't sit back and not have a community engagement process that uh, shows the developer what the community truly wants. Without that information, it's left up to him to decide with, with no uh, community uh, uh, input. And to us, to me, that means I feel we're failing our community. So that would be one of my top 10. And if we each pick two, then I'll pick one other one and make that the, the top 10 that we make sure make good progress. There's no guarantees, but that we, that the city makes good progress on those top 10. So, so I, I think, hope, I think we can all give Deb that feedback in our one and one and then bring us back as, um, you know, yeah. as we discuss the work plan in the future. Cause. And then I can publish that back to everybody ending up what that whole list looks like. I, I think right. it needs to be stronger. I, I think it needs to be stronger than that. I mean, you know, yes, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, but no, I don't feel that there is the, the uh, importance and uh, the ability for her, for the city manager to realize these are the ones that the whole council has said, top 10, these are the top 10. Everybody got something and those top 10 need to be moving forward as opposed to uh, the one-on-one no, -on -one that just gets no, an update. We will bring it back to the council, but in the meantime, you know, communicate what, you know, communicate with, communicate with Deb what your desire is and we will have it in a public meeting you know, as we're and, required. And I do. have, but we're not making the progress that needs to be made. Well, I mean, needs this just started this, the whole COVID thing. I mean, um, but yeah, I agree. I mean, that would be one of my priorities as well. And I agree with council member Chow when she brought up the issue uh, with our density bonus and um, that we should include something about jobs, housing and balance. Since as she pointed out, we do forego revenue by not um, building excessive amounts of office like some of our neighbors are doing. Um, and so I would encourage people to have that discussion now or or wait to have it when we bring it back to priority. Right, yes. Uh, I see, um, let's see, Diane, you have your hand raised. Diane Thompson.
Hello, Mayor. Hi. And um, City Council. Yes, I just wanted to jump in in response to Council Member Willie's suggestion of prioritizing that that would be something that Council would want to do um, based on input from staff, um, understanding what projects are underway and what projects are urgent. And also um, with the unknowns related to COVID, I think that there are um, kind of too many variables perhaps at this time for the council to consider prioritization. And I would um, support the suggestion that you wait on prioritization and just uh, provide your comments to the city manager um, in your one-on-one -on -one meetings. Okay, you know, and I understand some projects, um, they can go in the planning stages, whereas construction may have to wait a little while to get started, but uh, that we really don't wanna delay. Um, certain projects certain public works projects absolutely um, so with that okay leong you can have another anyone else want final comments um leong you can go ahead with uh a okay. couple more Hi. minutes two so, more minutes yeah i also think we do need uh, some high prioritization eventually maybe not today for example under public in public engagement there are eight items Similarly, under housing, there are like multiple items. So we, we may not get to all eight of them the next year. So maybe it's important to know what are our priorities among those eight um, when the time comes. And then the final comment is regarding, it's a, a, in general for, we have a lot of items this year on homelessness, homeless, program, housing program for the Anza student, facil the hygiene facilities and uh, other things. However, I realized that in the past, the cities are not the agency that's providing this kind of social services. It has always been the county. I assume county gets special funding for providing social services but they are not doing their job or they are not getting enough funding property right now. And now there are some of the responsibilities are fall, have fallen onto the cities, but we, don't, we didn't get any funding from the state or the federal government to provide any of the social services, except the very minimal, the block um, CDBG. Yeah, CDBG rent. block grant. That's, right. Yeah, that's very, very little. However, we are somehow being viewed as the cities have to do this, the cities have to do that. So I hope among all of the items for homeless, that's also included. What's the, where, where exactly the funding should come from? If the county is supposed to provide the service that we are providing now, shouldn't we get the funding partially from the county? Because they are actually the agency that's funded by the state to do that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is necessarily for the work plan, but you're absolutely right. I mean, the state has said they're going to provide funding for homeless services. Uh, the county, you know, obviously the cities don't have the money. Um, I know people were commenting on the COVID yeah. crisis and, and rental assistance. Well, I mean, that's great, but obviously the city doesn't have the money to run out and pay everyone's rent either. Yeah, um, so we, we have, have the to heart. So. I think right. in addition of looking at all the services that we can provide that include looking at where the coming is supposed to come from, not just from the government's emergency um, aging, but okay. where is the yeah, fair enough. funding source. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Um, so the recommended action is to adopt the 2021 work plan recognizing that uh, there are probably going to be significant changes in the in the coming couple of months based on uh, how long we're all shut down. Uh, so are you making a motion? Right. So I'll make a motion that we adopt the fiscal year 2021 city work program. Can I ask? Second. Uh, Can I ask a I'll second that. what I have mentioned? to clarify certain um, project objectives. I was going to ask that question a little different. What is the time frame that it would be coming back to us 
so that we can set a priority. If we're not going to pick the top 10 tonight, when would we be able to see it and uh, determine some, some type of prioritization? Well, here's what I would suggest is that each one of the council members can tell me what their top 10, top two are in their one-on-one. -on -one. I'm happy to publish it back to you all and get it to a public meeting at some point soon. Um, I don't know when we're going to be ready. I would say, I would say we'd have a really good handle on it by the time maybe this next order could be lifted, which would be early May. Yeah, I mean, as Diane pointed, this is really premature to, you know, to decide this now. We just don't. We just won't know for, you know, a month or so, you know, what the situation is. So let's not overthink this tonight. Yeah, it sounds like there's a motion in a second, but I mean, respecting John's concern uh, and, and very briefly, I can do it in a minute. Um, this probably isn't gonna deviate with regard to what I feel the primary focuses need to be in the city. Uh, we need to get Valco resolved. We need to do something about transit and clearly uh, housing is an ongoing issue. However, uh, that's clearly gonna be in flux with regard to what's happening uh, economically um, looking at what's happened recently uh, with COVID, uh, I think it's especially important that we focus on people's health. Uh, the item on secondhand smoke reduction seems awfully important uh, given that. Anything having to do with air pollution, I know that's an ongoing issue. It uh, speaks to our um, climate action plan as well. Um, on that topic, you have general health. Uh, we need to have better protocols, I feel, and just generally for reaching out to people and trying to figure out, you know, when you have a situation like this, uh, how do you provide access to facilities, but in a way that will allow you to communicate with uh, your, your residents and constituents quickly and comprehensively? I mean, I think we should be talking about, you know, activating our block leader program, uh, activating our uh, CERT um, and other emergency relief disaster council volunteers to try to really get a comprehensive type of outreach to the community. But that would need um, a concerted effort. Um, and, and especially if we we're able to take advantage of modern technology like we're doing here with this meeting and so many people are right now, you could probably address a lot of the um, incipient and, and deeply entrenched mental health issues as well uh, with respect to people feeling isolated, but not just feeling isolated, but being isolated with regard to getting more of these communications. So that would be, you know, if we were talking about just a high level summary of, you know, where, where people stand, this is where I would stand in, in terms of what uh, I think our priorities need to be. And I would put transit in front of housing. Um, it, it's, a, it's a matter of getting back and forth. Also, transit is changing very much. There are so many possibilities in mass transit, but the fact of the matter is we have a confluence between technology as well as clean tech um, in, you know, personal transit and automobiles. And I think we should be taking a look at that as well. Thanks. I'll support the motion, by the way. Okay. So can we do a roll call vote on the motion? Oh, wait. So um, I'd like to make a friendly amendment to include, sir, um, in the project objectives to include things I mentioned earlier. Like, um, the job housing ratio, um, funding for social services and funding for affordable housing and for BMR, um, include the BMR menu revision to include the required EI, ELI moderate income housing percentage. Okay. Council Member Chow, some of these things that you're mentioning are gonna take quite an effort, so are you suggesting are new work program items that need to push off something else? Um, right. We need to decide what to drop. Include those in the housing strategies discussion to see those whether those are necessary. Well, what so, I'm responding to is say, for example, and the density updating board. the BMR manual, for example, is going to be quite an effort. So, what would we would have to go they, back? They should be considered in the discussion. Whether we do it next year or not is part of the discussion, right? Because I'll second. Part of the housing strategy. 
Yeah. I'll second that we should have those. Require, um, the certain amount of BMR percentage of housing is also part of the housing strategy. Can you can you uh, reframe and kind of more, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, succinctly say how you modif how you would want to modify the housing objective? Okay. So first amendment is for item one, the RENA study session that should include the job housing ratio. And second is the housing strategy. It should really be affordable housing strategy and including discussion of funding because affordable housing really rely depends on whether we have funding available. And second is include the discussion of BMR menu to include the required percentage of ELI and moderate income housing. So this is a, this is a possible housing strategy to consider. Another third one is density bonus ordinance, whether to clarify the requirement of, of how to implement a density bonus so that they won't be abused. So we actually get that we deserve, okay? And then the next one is item, are we are we now redoing the work program? Is that what we're doing now? Right, we're going to have to start removing things then. No, no, no. These are housing strategies. Otherwise, what are you considering? Right, but right, but we don't have to list everything we're going to discuss. If we don't, right. I think all of these started. all of these are worthwhile discussing under housing strategies. And we will, but this is you know an outline. It's not. I mean. I think you're trying to go in and do and actually Im implement the work plan right in this meeting. I mean, I'm all in favor of talking about because jobs, housing ratio. At, okay. And funding and, and making I, it affordable housing, not just housing. I think and, it just helps us to remember these are things to consider. Well, I, you know, in the discussion, right? But we're all, we're all going to be there to help consider them. Are we? Yep. Because by the time it brings back to the council a lot of times, these items are already further down the way by implemented by staff. No. Right? So that's why I would like to um, include that so we don't forget. Well, should we include it now or should we include it later when I have to bring this back anyways? Okay, you can do that. So that's on the record that we- Yeah, it is. Included yeah. at it's taped. This whole right. thing is taped. Yep. Okay. Right. And I will support all of those things you said. Yeah. And then another thing is the, regarding items um, seven, eight. These are for homeless services. I would like to clarify where this the funding is supposed to come from for this kind of social services. Uh, right. And, uh, yeah. You already I mentioned think, that. And the, and. The, um, but you made the motion and making the amendment that maybe we should include that in the project ob objective of this item. Because right now the objective is just, oh, let's provide the service. It doesn't talk about funding, but that should be something we should try and figure out also. It's not only the funding from the governance pledge, but also what's supposed to be the sustainable continuous funding for this kind of service, Where, which agency they went to. And well, I mean, the objectives, the project objectives are vague enough that we can discuss all of this. I mean, they're intentionally not specific. So we have the opportunity to discuss all of these issues, you know, when, when we get to them. A lot of these, as I realized by the time it comes to the council, there is already a complete staff report with a lot of effort already put into it. We don't get to discuss it before a lot of staff effort has been spent on that. So I'm I telling you, I'm telling you that it's probable that part of this work program will not be executable anyway. So I'm going to have to bring the whole thing back to so all I'm asking is for this project objective to mention, um, look at the source of funding for such service. That I wrote it down. I wrote it down. So, I mean, council member Chow has a good point. Often we, we have our goals and then the staff comes back with a report and it doesn't match what we thought, but they've 
spent so much time and effort on it, we're almost expected um, to pass it and approve it um, just because of all the effort that's been put in even now, I think things, you know, to be honest with Deb here, I think things are changing in that regard. Um, in the past, uh, we would not, I, I, in the past, I would agree we need to be extremely specific. Um, but in this case, I think Deb hears what, what we're saying here and we'll direct staff because remember staff, you know, we don't, we don't direct staff directly. Um, okay so if you i guess you can include it in the document or um, just put it on the record and then include it in the implementation gotcha. okay yeah okay there's a motion and a second can we have a roll call vote now council member chow aye council member sinks aye council member willie Aye. Vice Mayor Paul. Aye. Mayor Scharf. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, great. We are on to council and staff comments. Are there any more staff comments? None from me, thank you. Okay. Any, any other staff members? All right, council comments. Uh, let's start with uh, John this time. Under the last couple of weeks of uh, shelter in place, uh, no comments this week. Well, yes, I do have a comment. And that is, <clears throat> I do think uh, uh, city manager is doing a, a very good job on the uh, COVID-19. I think we uh, really need to uh, keep that as a high priority until the uh, emergency has uh, somewhat uh, been uh, downsized. So we definitely need to make sure that that's a priority and um, getting the information out. I also would like to see us, you know, um, trying to get uh, more masks uh, for people that need them. So that'll be it. Okay, um, Council Member Chow. Hi. So, yeah, I'd like to thank a lot the staff members for, for continuing to work at this stressful time and then also a lot of all the healthcare and the police fire um, firemen they are still working and at this time and thank a lot of community members who have donated the masks to the city and to our hospitals around here then it's really, really appreciate all the effort. It seems right now Kaiser might have enough masks, but then I'm wondering whether we need masks for um, cashiers and other healthcare workers who take care of seniors. And thanks staff for coordinating a lot of this effort. And in terms of agenda item, I hope that during this time, in the future council meetings, can we put the first item as an um, update for COVID-19 in every meeting so that we could ask questions and then maybe um, talk about how we can do better, for example, um, do better outreach to better through block leader program or other things. So that's a request for agenda item. And the second one is I'm wondering, do we, I think some companies have a hiring freeze and I'm wondering we should consider, um, in considering the letter from VG, should we consider hiring freeze, spending freeze, not signing new, new contract, even though it's for the 1920 year, because as VG pointed out, our budget is 140 million, $42 million uh, um, well, our hundred budget is $150 million, $8 million more than our revenue. So we had to bring uh, $8 million from the reserve. Should we continue this kind of spending for the this year, 1920 year, that we should consider. Um, then another thing is, uh, 
and really like this format that of teleconferencing. However, we used to get paper copy of staff representation so that we could flip back on after the presentation. We don't have that available, so it will be nice if the staff representation could also be posted to that. It could be right before the meeting, but it's just posted somewhere so the council and public can access them during the meeting. Uh, thank you. Okay, um, Darcy. I, I just wanted to say a good job to a couple of our departments and thank you. Uh, first to the Public Works Department. Um, a couple of weekends ago, I contacted our city manager um, with regard to uh, masks and PPE and they were um, basically looking at a severe shortage, uh, not just uh, regionally uh, or, or nationally, but very locally with regard to our local, uh, one of our very uh, close in proximity hospitals here. And um, Public Works was able to put together a couple of donation bins for masks and, and that um, personal protective equipment or PPE. Uh, one's in front of City Hall, one's in front of library. Uh, we've already received some significant uh, contributions. So thank you very much to uh, the public for pulling together for that as well. I'd also like to thank the Parks and Recreation Department or the Recreation and Community Services Department um, for um, keeping updated on their website um, and reaching out to the community with the various types of activities that they could be doing. I, I'd really like to um, you know, plead for people to observe the social distancing um, you know, requirements as well as making sure that your, um, your kids are doing the same thing. Um, in, in these days, it is really critically important to have uh, the physical activity that the fields and our, our tracks, uh, and you know, frankly, possibly other facilities if we could uh, do this properly uh, represent. Um, but unfortunately, as people are congregating and getting you know, too close and not observing um, not just the, the, the stringent requirements, but the spirit of social distancing, we're having to shut down uh, all these various facilities. Um, so I thank Parks and Rec uh, for working to put those resources online. And I would encourage staff to uh, keep doing that kind of uh, outreach to our community. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, everyone stay, stay safe and stay healthy like everyone else has been saying. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Darcy. Uh, Council Member Sinks. Yeah, I'd uh, like to <clears throat> also um, appreciate staff, a, a resident who's been involved with emergency prep in the city made a request to us asking if we had N95 masks in storage and the city manager uh, responded to that uh, with an inventory. We have some 2,400 plus uh, unfortunately, uh, we found out that uh, we had purchased all of them in 2005 and they have a shelf life of five years. And we're guessing it's because, you know, eventually the elastic wears out. And especially if these things are in, in, in our arcs in the storage uh, where temperature cycles a lot. But I know the city manager has been reaching out to uh, hospitals uh, to see uh, if, if, these are of uh, interest to them. Uh, the same resident that made the inquiry said, hey, you know, if you need us to stitch new elastic on, we'd be happy to do that too. So um, I think there's a, a lot of uh, community um, spirit in, in trying to help here. I'd also uh, like to acknowledge the efforts uh, our county has made in really uh, going the extra distance to lead and band together with all the other counties uh, in the Bay Area. I think it's helpful, right, to have a common set of guidelines so people aren't confused. You may live in one county and work in another. I think uh, they've they've done, done an exemplary job in leading. I think uh, the state and, and Governor Newsom have shown excellent leadership. I could only wish that um, the federal government had been consistent and consequent and gotten on all of this uh, a month sooner. But I think, um, you know, I, I have to give, um, I have to uh, uh, celebrate, uh, if that's the right word, um, you know, the leadership uh, in our county and, and in our state 
uh, for hopefully, um, you know, really flattening the curve. We know it's, we know, um, <clears throat> uh, we know uh, we're going to have to continue to be vigilant and continue this for at least another month. And I only hope that the actions we took when we did uh, will avert many uh, folks being becoming ill and uh, and dying because, uh, yeah, in, in a lot of ways, right, whether we're in our households or interacting in public spaces or in stores, uh, in some ways we're all in this together and we need everybody to pitch in and do the right thing. Thanks. Okay, so I will go last. Um, I agree with everything that everyone said. I wanted to point out on masks, I reached out to um, Kaiser's government affairs person yesterday because there's been so much misinformation regarding masks. Um, so, you know, a lot of uh, the medical facilities um, can use N95 masks that aren't expired, but the reality is um, most of the hospitals have sufficient stocks. They're not, I mean, they're being more judicious in giving out masks. Uh, in the past, they would give one out just because someone requested it, even if it was unnecessary, uh, but just to make the person feel better. Um, but they're not doing that anymore. They're being careful, but, but there are um, sufficient quantities of the medical facilities. Um, but like the council member Chow said, perhaps some of these masks could be used for um, non-medical personnel, cashiers, things, uh, th that sort of thing. So hopefully they're all gonna get to the right place uh, in terms of the masks. And then I was asked by one uh, resident in an email uh, I know last week at the March 24th meeting, we talked about um, any plans for rental assistance. And we are working diligently on this based on the feedback from the council of that we want to be helping um, a larger number of people. And we want to be working with nonprofits and corporations and landlords um, in order to come up with a good program. Um, you know, as people have been saying throughout this meeting, you know, financially, all the cities are taking hits and we need to be really careful about ensuring that we're spending all our money uh, in, in a wise manner to help the most people. And so that will be coming back, hopefully, at the next meeting, uh, if we can get it all together in the next seven days. If not, it would be at, at a future meeting. And... I think as uh, one communication we got, it's vital that we get the information out to everyone that's been affected with job loss about what what's out there to help them. Um, the eviction protection from the county, uh, SNAP, unemployment, anything that can help them, they need to be informed. And I think that's something West Valley can do and that we can do as well. Uh, so with that, I don't have anything else. Um, anyone else have anything to say before we adjourn? No so I proposed uh, two agenda items. Do I get second? One is that's put um, COVID-19 update in the as first item for every council meeting from now until until this is over. Let's take yeah. one at a time. So that, right. that okay, um, Heather, how do we do that? Uh, do we just need at the beginning of each meeting need to take a vote of the council to put it first? Is Heather still here? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You can um, just add one item, right? Yeah, you, you you need two council members to add an item to an agenda at this time, and then um, it's the city manager and the mayor can and consider putting that on the next agenda and it would just be published with the agenda as a notice. Right. I, I mean, I can add it to the agenda myself, right? Yeah, so, right. yeah I, I'm happy yeah. to do that. I think that's that's a great idea. So, yeah, in the future for the pandemic, we'll make a city manager report um, part of the, uh, you know, one of the first agenda items after. Yeah, and then probably can ask questions. We would be, be able to respond 
on the item. That's true, because that's an agenda item. We can yeah. respond on that. Okay, what was the second one? And the second one is uh, let's consider possible hiring freeze, spending freeze for the current fiscal year because from VJ's uh, analysis, we are $8 million in, uh, in negative this year. We are drawing our reserves. Should we continue this spending or look at priority? Of course, I agree that library should still continue. However, maybe we can be eased up on pavement. Yeah. Can, can, I, can I suggest that part of the city manager's job is to come back and make recommendations on what how we would currently address the 1920 budget and then the 2021 budget? So we are yeah. looking at uh, not spend going all the way for 1920, right? Not necessarily. Okay. Yeah, not necessarily. Right. I, I wouldn't want to necessarily have a you know, hiring freeze. If we lose people in a certain department, they may have to be replaced. And the council has, am I right? The council has to approve um, every new full-time employee. Is that true? Can I note that this is just whether we're going to put the agenda item on or allow Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All All right. Right. yeah, maybe yeah, not the hiring haven't. freeze, but then I hope that there will be an agenda item we can discuss on yeah. the spending priority. Yeah, I think we can. Yeah, um, Deb, let's put an agenda item um, regarding your whole effort. Um, what did you call it? The recessionary spending, budgeting. Recessionary budgeting. I think that would be a good agenda item to talk about. Um, we have to do it when I'm when I have enough data, though. So we need. Okay. To, I'll try and help place it somewhere, but. Uh, but recessionary budgeting is talking about um, a projection for next year. So I'm talking about- No, that's not true. No, 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 it's, it's not true. Right? It's for this year that's too. That's not true. Okay. It's 1920 and 2021. Mm. So sure, I would support putting a recessionary budget item when appropriate and not not in June, but- But in you know, May, it's in too In May late. at least. But in May, it's already yeah. too late because 1920 ends in June. So but remember you- point? Yeah, so are we, I guess I the next to, question is, are we continuing the spending pattern right now? Are we expecting to continue the spending pattern as business as usual in April, May and June? That's, again, hard for me to answer without doing the studying of the financial system. So if Especially capital project request be able to bring are that essential. So uh, why do we need to wait until May to answer that? Because your biggest cost is labor. Your biggest cost is actual, it's labor. It's not capital budgets. It's not the library expansion. It's, it's labor. That's right. It, oh. It's our, it's staffing. I thought it's capital projects. And I'm, we, I'm sorry. In case we sign no, a contract. No, Heather, Heather has a good point. We, we cannot be discussing this here. It's not agendized. Okay. So okay. can we discuss this maybe next Tuesday? Because no. we can discuss now. I will not be ready. It's okay. We just will be discussing whether there is a need to consider it before May. I'd right? like for it to be database, data driven. So um, I will not be ready on April 7. I already have a task to bring back on April 7, which is a whole plan for West Valley city managers, loans. There's all. Oh. Stop. My concern is we will sign new contract in the next two months that will commit us for spending certain capital spending for million or so dollars. How about this? I promise that we won't and okay. <laughs> bring it back to the council. Okay, that's good. How's that? Yeah, that's good. Well, I mean, already approved projects that are funded. Um, you know, I wouldn't want you to stop those anyway. No, that's right. Okay. Yeah, so right. I mean, I have to say that over. if we, if, if, you know, given that it takes, there's a big flywheel in starting and stopping projects. Exactly. The, exactly. the last thing we want to do is have people just sit on their thumbs and get no, no progress for it. I mean, we want to continue to pay our staff. And so it, it makes sense to, to um, have the city manager come back when she's ready, when we have data and we know what's going on. Uh, not just artificially constrain her uh, with uh, a 
budget. I think I'm talking about maybe it's a contract with outside consultant, not existing. Well, it, I mean, there may all. be, but it may, I mean, uh, yeah. So I don't think I should say any more. Okay, yeah, it's not agenda. because we can't everyone discuss has an this. opinion. <clears throat> okay. All right. So is there anything else before we adjourn? Yeah, I wanted to thank our IT staff as well. They've been working overtime and coming uh, in and doing a great job in coordinating these yeah. meetings. So thanks. Yep. Yeah, you know, th th thank you. They have been so awesome. And I was talking to another council member in a, in a East Bay City, and she said, oh, we've canceled all our council meetings. Our city manager says we don't have the ability to do any teleconferencing. And I go, wow, you know, oh, you know don't, yeah. please don't hire our people away. And okay. let me tell you, I just want to make one last, one last comment. Um, the last several weeks when we've been doing virtual EOCs, emergency operations center work, and I'm just so appreciative. The staff is so flexible. Um, so with, we've got a great IT department, but without people willing to adapt to new technology to do their jobs like virtual inspections, we would not be here. And I'll tell you, we're leading the pack. Ben Fu is like teaching other cities how to do this. So um, let's just say that innovation comes from, you know, not a great IT department and people willing to use it and try it. So um, we're where we are because of the whole team. So I'm just really appreciative. Okay. So yeah. we're an hour over where we're supposed to be. Thank you. All right. Thank so you. Thank adjourn. You, I don't have my gavel, but I, I will adjourn it with a. <laughs> you need your travel gavel. With my LaCroix can. Adjourned. <laughs>